mighty 50 questions. These are the top 50 questions or top important questions that you should definitely know and this I have prepared as a separate PDF, this mighty 50 questions which is available in my website under downloads. If you are already having solve workbook, you are having, so I gave the references also, solve workbook, what is the question number and what is the page number. So you can just take, if you have the solve workbook, that question number and that page number and you can see that questions. And these 50 questions covering the entire portion, GST, customs, FTP. But minimum to minimum, at least these 50 questions, a student must be having idea about. And it does not mean, if these 50 questions you revise, that will be sufficient. I cannot endorse that way. So that is wrong also, because if I tell, you read these 50 questions and go for exam, you are not going for a board exam. So don't ask me this question, is this 50 questions enough sir? Come on, we are writing CA final exam, okay. But these 50 questions, minimum, minimum you should be knowing about these 50 questions correlated concepts. How I selected these 50 questions is that, by analyzing the past exam question papers and those areas which are not asked in exam, those areas which are repeatedly asked in exam, so, considering that I have selected these questions, covering at the same time overall all the concepts also. Look into question number 1. So, these 50 questions are part of the 200 questions which is there in the mighty 200 given at the end of the solve workbook. These questions are there already. So, therefore, apart from that the remaining 150 questions you need to read, okay. Answer the following with reference to GST, Compensation to States Act 2017. Projected growth rate, base year, projected revenue for any year, calculation and release of compensation, objective of GST Compensation to States Act. What is this? First of all, GST compensation says is levied in order to compensate the loss of revenue to the state government on account of implementation of GST. That is the objective of this GST Compensation to States Act. Now, how this compensation will be payable? For the purpose of payment of compensation, they do a computation that is a base year will be taken, that base year will be 2015-16 will be taken as base year. And 2015-16, we see what is the actual revenue, what is the actual revenue for 2015-16. And 2015-16, for a particular state government, say state government of Tamil Nadu, the base year actual revenue was 150 crores, 150 crores, for example, I am taking. Now, we need to do the projection based on this base year 2016, 17, 2017, 18, 2018, 19, 19, 20 and 20, 21 like that so far. For how many years? So, this computation needs to be done till 31st March 2026 because the period of imposition of this compensation is extended up to 31st March 2026, which means that up to 2026, so it will be paid. That is an amendment, 2026. Now, we need to take the projected revenue. How to compute the projected revenue? So, the projected revenue, the projected revenue is by taking the base revenue and adding 14%. So, therefore, the growth rate is considered as 14%. Every year, the revenue will grow by 14%. So, that is taken as the assumption while doing the compensation says calculation. Now, projected revenue 150 crores into like or plus 14% that will be 171 crores and again plus 14%. Plus 14%, 194 
0.94 crores. Then thereafter plus 14 percent 222.23 crores plus 14 percent 253.34 crores plus 14 percent 288.81 crores. Now this will be taken as the projected revenue. Now 2017-18 we do not have GST for the full year. So we need to convert this for 9 months because GST is implemented from 1st July 2017. So in 17-18 we need to take only for 9 months. So into 9 by 12. So into 9 by 12 when we take 1 146.20 this will be taken as the projected revenue for these years. Now we need to see what is the actual revenue. Say the actual revenue for 2016-17 is 160 crores and 17-18 is 170 then 183 then 260 crores and 280 crores like that they got. Now, for 16-17, what is the compensation payable? Compensation payable. Compensation is payable only from the date of implementation of GST. That is only from 17-18. So, 17-18, we need to again convert this into 9 by 12. Why 9 by 12? Because this is for the full year, we need to get it for 9 months. 127 point so therefore what is the compensation that is payable for 1718 146.2 they should have got but they got only 127.50 so the remaining amount will be given as compensation 18.70 same way for 1819 222.23 they should have got as revenue but they got only 183, so then compensation will be 29.39.23 crores. Again, 1920, they will not get any compensation because their actual revenue is more than the projected revenue. Whereas, in 2020-21, they will get 288.81 minus 280 crores. So, that will be 8.81 crores they will be getting as compensation. So, therefore, compensation payable will be projected revenue minus actual revenue. So, the growth rate is taken as 14 percent. So, projected growth rate is taken as 14 percent per annum and base year 2015-16 will be taken as the base year. So, that is the second point and so this 2015-16 means 31st March 2016 that is what 2015-16 and projected revenue for any year how to calculate projected revenue for any year base year revenue plus 14 percent we get the projected revenue calculation and release of payment so the compensation will be computed as projected revenue minus actual revenue and it will be computed so for every two months it will be computed for every two months and finally calculated every financial year. So, provisionally it will be calculated every two months and it will be paid. Again, finally they will calculate it at the end of the year and based on the figures, audited figures of the state government's actual revenue by controller and auditor general. So, that will be taken. Then objective already we have discussed. So, this is mainly to provide the compensation to the states on account of implementation of GST. So, this is one question which uh, they have asked in CS professional exam two attempts before and this compensation says concept is there in CA final exam also but you know this type of question they have not yet tested. So, maybe in that six marks question so, they may give for 4 marks or 5 marks this question. So, that is the reason why I have given this. Then question number 2. Question number 2 is in page number 15 of your latest solve workbook.
question number 16 and page number 15 state answers to the following as in accordance with the provisions of gst pertaining to reverse charge what are the implications to the supplier if recipient refuses to pay tax on reverse charge there is no consequence to the supplier because once it is reverse charge the liability to pay gst to the government is on the recipient if the recipient has not paid any gst to the government so there is no consequence to the supplier and supplier is not required to discharge the liability then number 2 in case supplier has paid the gst is recipient discharged from the liability to pay tax on reverse charge no suppose if the transaction is covered under rcm and liability to pay gst is on the recipient and if the recipient fails to do so and the supplier has paid means it is like excess payment of tax by the supplier and non payment of tax by the recipient and it will be recovered from the recipient along with interest and from the supplier supplier can claim the refund of the tax excess paid but this adjustment we don't have like if recipient is liable to pay but supplier has paid so which means recipient is relieved or exonerated from payment of liability we don't have then number 3 is GST wrongly paid by the supplier available as input tax credit to the recipient? No. So, that is suppose if supplier has paid the tax which the recipient has to pay under RCM, can the recipient take it as ITC? No. First of all, supplier is not required to pay the tax and he need to get the refund with respect to that. He cannot claim refund if he charges the GST to the recipient. So, therefore, refund is subject to unjust enrichment and he should not pass on the burden to the next person. The next person should not take ITC and the supplier should claim the refund with respect to that. Then, what are the registration requirement of supplier and recipient? If supplier supplies goods or services which are liable to tax under reverse charge. So, supplier is not having any registration requirement. So, they are perhaps exempted from registration under section 23 if all their output supplies are covered under RCM. However, if their output supplies are partly taxable under FCM and partly taxable under RCM, then they need to register under section 22 as and when their aggregate turnover exceeds threshold limit. However, recipient who is liable to pay GST under RCM is compulsorily required to get registered irrespective of the threshold limit under section 24. So, that is what we need to write. Then, fifth one, if all the supplies of a person are under reverse charge, can such person avail any exemption from registration? Yes. As per section 23, already we discussed, if their outward supplies are fully covered under RCM, they are exempted from registration. That is this. Then, question number 3, so this question number 2 is like a theory question, but connecting multiple points of RCM, they can coin a question like this, registration, mainly registration and ITC, so payment of tax, who is liable to pay tax, so they can ask if this as a normal question like somewhere in question number 2 or question number 3 or 4, one part will be 4 marks question. Usually, every question apart from question number 1 will have 554, five, that is how it will be 14 marks, 554 five, or 10 plus 4. So, 10 marks question will be GST, 4 marks question will be customs. If they are asking GST questions, then it will be 1 5 marks, 2 5 marks questions on GST and 1 4 marks question. So, in that 5 marks question on GST, they can ask this, okay. If it is 10 marks question on GST, it will be purely a computation based. Then question number 3, Sundar is HRD of Infosys. For the year ending March 31st, 2021, CTC of Sundar as per employment agreement is as follows. As per employment agreement. Salary 2 lakh per month, residential accommodation cost to company 6 lakhs, conveyance facility reimbursement up to 25,000 per month, 
cost to companies 33 lakhs and on january 1 2021 infosys gifts a car to sundar worth rupees 12 lakhs gift of car is not covered by ctc as well as employment agreement sundar owns a commercial flat he has given on rent to infosys monthly rent being 3 lakhs discuss whether gst is applicable determine the amount of gst liability assume that gst rate is 28 percent for car and 18 percent for others first rent received on account of renting of commercial flat by sundar to infosys so any renting of commercial property for commercial purpose or residential property for commercial purpose will be taxable and sundar is liable to pay gst and the same constitutes supply also because it is not covered under employment agreement it's a separate activity and it is in the course or furtherance of business so therefore it will become supply under 71a and gst liability on sundar will be so rent received from the flat 3 lakhs so and the rate of gst is 18 percent so 3 lakhs into 18 percent so that's what we need to write with respect to the first point transaction of renting service by sundar to infosys falls within the scope of supply renting being a commercial activity gst liability will be payable at 18 percent and here if sundar is registered they are required to pay the liability if sundar is not registered they are not required to pay the liability but there is gst liability so whenever we are talking about gst liability you don't bring in they are not registered they are registered etc and all see first liability thereafter if they register they pay if they are not registered they will not pay so don't jump to the conclusion in answer in exam so many students make this mistake that in the, there is no information that they are registered so therefore they are not required to pay gst that even valuer also no you don't have to tell him they are not required to pay but the question asked there is is it chargeable to gst or not is it taxable or not see taxable a service is taxable but if i register only i will pay gst if a service is exempted i am not required to pay gst even if i am registered you understood so therefore taxability and exempted is a different aspect registered or not is a different aspect first you need to write the service is taxable and chargeable to gst however they are not registered so gst payability or gst shall not be payable or if they are registered the gst shall be payable like that we can write okay then next second salary receipt salary receipt we need to take it under as per 7 subsection 3 or 7 subsection 2 7 subsection 2 read with schedule 3 7 subsection 2 read with schedule 3 employee services by employee to employer in the course of employment is excluded from supply accordingly the salary received by mr sundar is excluded from supply and therefore gst liability shall not arise then here a presumption is taken that sundar is not opting for the benefit of threshold limit that's why gst payable suppose if you take a different assumption that they are not registered because their aggregate turnover does not exceed threshold limit then you will write that gst is not payable i have written here in the previous point taxability of rent received gst payable because of the assumption that i took that is sundar is not opting for the threshold benefit means they have crossed the threshold limit and suppose if you take that they have not crossed the threshold limit then in that case gst not payable but the service will be taxable salary excluded from supply then next residential accommodation conveyance facility provided by infosys to sundar so this will be coming under you know perk visits we have one cbic circular latest cbic circular which says that any goods or services supplied by the employer to employee without consideration as perquisites which are covered under salary offer document is treated as salary and the same is excluded from supply accordingly 
as residential accommodation and conveyance facility are part of CTC covered under salary, the same will be excluded from supply and thus it will not attract any GST liability. Then next last gift of car by Infosys to Sundar. So, gift by employer to employee not exceeding 50,000 per annum per employee is not a supply. However, in this case, the gift of car which is not as per CTC or employment agreement is a gift and it exceeds 50,000. The same is chargeable to GST in the hands of Infosys at 28% because the rate of GST on car is 28%. So, at 28% GST will be payable. So, that is what we need to write. An entire value of the car, entire value of the car will be chargeable to GST at 28%. So, this question can be asked because there is one amendment related to perquisites, one circular, one CBIC circular is there related to perquisites due to that reason this question can be asked. We have to write that, we have to write only when it exceeds 50,000 it will become supply. So, gift, see provisions, that specific provision, please be clear and write it. You have to write it. Okay. So, no, no, it is not mentioned in the CTC as well as employment agreement, but given by employer to employee. It is not covered under CTC as well as employment agreement means they are specifying that it is a gift. If it is covered under employee agreement, then it is a perquisite. Then even if the perquisite is 100 crores also, there is no GST on that. Okay. So, the car can be given by employer to employee as per offer document. That will not be covered under supply. Okay, for that reason it is given. It does not mean that there is no employer-employee relationship. There is employer-employee relationship. Then question number 4. This question number 4 is in page number 28. Page number 28. This is related to TCS. Ecom Limited, an e-commerce operator has provided the following supplies during December 2020. Supply of goods taxable at 12 percent by registered supplier and in this case what is the requirement we need to do? So, see the requirement first for this practical questions. Any practical questions the approach should be like first we need to see the requirement, determine the amount of TCS by Ecom Limited, determine the consequences if the said amount is paid and return is filed on 15-1 because for December 2020, the due date of filing TCS return GSTR 8 is 10th of the month following every month and they are filing on 15, so there will be late fee plus there will be also interest. Then. Now, first we need to compute the TCS. Now, read that point carefully. Supply of goods taxable at 12 percent by registered supplier. Is this the own goods of the e-commerce operator or goods belonging to some other person supplied through e-commerce platform? Goods belonging to some other person supplied through e-commerce platform. If the own goods of the e-commerce operator is supplied through their platform, there is no TCS liability. TCS liability will arise in a picture where there are supplies through e-commerce operator. When it is regarded as supplies through e-commerce operator, the supplier and the e-commerce operator are different persons. So, in this case, supply of goods taxable at 12 percent by registered supplier. So, this will attract TCS because the goods are taxable and the supplier is registered person. So, TCS is payable. However, TCS is computed on net value of taxable supplies while computing the net value of taxable supplies we need to reduce the returns so sales returns needs to be reduced so 5 lakhs minus 50000 then supply of goods taxable at nil rate by registered supplier 
even though supplies are through e-commerce operator and the supplier is registered but they are not taxable supplies they are exempted supplies tcs is not applicable so therefore computation is not required in that case but we need to write the note clearly as to why tcs is not applicable supply of housekeeping services by unregistered supplier now in case of housekeeping services by unregistered supplier it is a notified service under section 9 subsection 5 so there are total four services h a t e housekeeping service accommodation service transportation of passengers by any motor vehicle eating food from the restaurant in that first two cases supplier should be unregistered and in the next two cases supplier may or may not be registered so here housekeeping service is the first one supplier is unregistered so it is a notified service under 9 subsection 5 and we learned that whenever G gst is payable under 9 subsection 5 by e-commerce operator tcs will not be applicable because section 9 subsection 5 and section 52 are mutually exclusive then supply of other services by registered supplier so supplier is registered other services so which are taxable so definitely tcs will be applicable on this 150 so the tcs will be computed at 1% as there is no information about intrastate or interstate so directly 1% will be computed 5 lakhs plus 150 minus 50000 so that will be 6 lakhs 6 lakhs into 1% that is 6000 6000 will be taken as the tcs amount now this 6000 rupees should be paid by 10th january 2021 but it is paid on 15 january 2021 because of which there is a late fee the late fee will be in case of tcs 100 rupees per day gstr 7 only 25 rupees per day subject to maximum 1000 rupees late fee for tds return but for tcs return gstr 8 it is 100 rupees per day subject to maximum 5000 under each act therefore the late fee payable under cgst act is 500 sgst act is 500 and the total late fee will be 1000 rupees then interest under section 50 is payable for delay in payment of tcs and what is that interest at 18 percent again for five days delay so therefore interest will be 6000 on tcs 6000 into 18 percent into 5 divided by 365 so that interest will be 15 this is the total interest because we took the total tcs again we should not write 15 under cgst 15 under sgst you took the total tax so interest also total when you take cgst and compute interest that will be cgst interest when you take sgst and compute interest that is sgst interest so that is the answer for this then question number five Question number 5 is in page number 44. This question is related to TDS. Manihar Enterprises registered in Delhi is engaged in supply of various goods and services exclusively to government departments, agencies, etc and persons notified under section 51 of CGST Act. It has provided the information relating to supplies made, their contract values and the payment due against each of them in the month of October. So, therefore, they have given for the month of October some data. Now, what we need to do? You are required to determine the amount of tax, if any, to be deducted in each of the receivable given above assuming the rate of CGST, SGST and IGST as 9%, 9%, 18%. Remember, whenever in the question, you see like this, CGST, SGST, IGST, which means we need to apply the place of supply provisions and we need to segregate the transactions into intrastate and interstate and arrive at the liability accordingly. So far, we have not come across this. They have given only GST rate. For example, in that Sundar, so, HR of a company, etc., there the rate is given as 18. 
they did not give any breakup of CGST, SGST like that. So, we did not take. Again, here also we do not have any information about intrastate, interstate, etc. That is why we took 1 percent. But here, whenever we see interpret, we should also interpret is it intrastate or interstate. Now, TDS will be applicable under section 51 whenever supplies are made to notified recipients. And one important point here is that the value of supply under the contract should exceed 250, then only TDS will be applicable. If it does not exceed 250, TDS is not applicable and while computing this 250, we should take out the GST component. Now, looking into the first one, supply of stationery to fisheries department Kolkata. Here, all these supplies are made to government departments or agencies which are covered under TDS that is given in the first paragraph itself, exclusively to government departments or agencies. So, whenever we are making supplies to government departments or agencies, definitely that will attract TDS. Now, supply of stationery to fisheries department of Kolkata, 2,60,000 inclusive of GST. Now, we need to know what is the rate of GST with respect to this, 18 percent. So, 9,918, 9, so 18% you take 2,60,000 into 100 divided by 118, that is 2,20,338. As the value of supply under the contract does not exceed 2,50,000, TDS is not applicable. So, that is what we need to write as the explanation for the first point. For the first point, TDS not applicable. Then, second point. Supply of car, supply of car rental services to municipal corporation of Delhi. So, here the value of supply under the contract 2,95,000 into 100 divided by 118, exactly 2,50, even then TDS is not applicable. If the value of supplies under the contract does not exceed 2,50, including 2,50, TDS is not applicable. Then third, Supply of heavy machinery to public sector undertaking located in Uttarakhand 5,90,000. So, definitely value of supply under the contract exceeds 2,50,000 and as this is supply of machinery, so it is supply of goods and the place of supply as per section 10.1a of IGST Act that is ending point of the goods will be taken that is Uttarakhand. Location of supplier is Delhi and place of supply is Uttarakhand. Therefore, it will be chargeable to IGST and the rate of TDS will be 2 percent and it will be computed on 25,000, 25,000 payment, not on the contract value. TDS is always computed on the amount remitted. So, 25,000, how much is the amount remitted or due in October 25,000? So, it will be computed on 25,000. So, now TDS deducted, we need to prepare three columns that is CGST, SGST, IGST and it should come in IGST 500 rupees that should be taken. So, here we are applying place of supply as well as TDS provisions. Then, next one, supply of taxable goods to Delhi office of National Housing Bank, a society established by Government of India under Society Registration Act 1860, 6,49,000. Now, in this case, so supply to notified recipients where the value of supply under the contract exceeds 2,50,000 and this supply of goods, place of supply determined under section 101A as per 101A of IGST Act the ending point of goods will be taken as a place of supply. In this case, a place of supply will be Delhi, location of supplier Delhi, place of supply Delhi, therefore, it will become intrastate supply and chargeable to CGST, SGST. So, 1 percent payable towards CGST and 1 percent payable towards SGST on the amount remitted. The amount remitted is 50,000. So, 50,000 into 1 percent, 50,000 into 1 percent, 500 and 500 will be taken. Then next. Next, we have supply of interior decoration of Andhra Pradesh Bhavan, Andhra Bhavan located in Delhi 
service contract is entered into with the government of Andhra Pradesh registered only, only in Andhra Pradesh. Now, this is an exception to applicability of TDS. If it is an intrastate supply and place of supply and location of recipient is in two different states, then TDS is not applicable. Here, location of supplier is Delhi and place of supply in case of service in relation to immobile property is location of immobile property as per section 12. As immobile property is in India, supplier and recipient are in India, place of supply of service, service in relation to immobile property is determined under section 12 and 12 of IGST Act. Therefore, the place of supply will be location of immobile property which is in Delhi, not Andhra Pradesh, Delhi. So, location of supplier Delhi, place of supply Delhi, therefore it will become intrastate supply. But as the recipient is in Andhra Pradesh, not registered in Delhi and this being intrastate, so the recipient in Andhra Pradesh cannot deduct 1% towards Delhi, CG, Delhi SGST. So, due to that reason, TDS is not applicable under section 51. He, I am not mad or cracked to discuss all these explanation. Why am I discussing this explanation? That has to be written. So, if you are writing only the amounts, you know, if this question is for 8 marks or 10 marks, you will get only 5 marks. For 10 marks, only 5 marks. Because for this notes only, you will get the marks, full marks. So, this notes has to be written. Definitely, the notes has to be written. So, whatever explanation, simple, what is to be written as notes, sir? The moment you see the question, here something will process. So, that something process should be written in the answer sheet. That need not be in like, like legal language, etc., grammar, do not bother about it. Sentence formation, if you know, and whatever is processing in your mind, ensure that you are writing it there. It has to be written. And then only you can expect full marks for this. Then next. So, due to that reason, TDS is not applicable in this case for fifth point. Then sixth, supply of printed books and printed postcards to a West Delhi post office. Out of total contract value of 9,72,000, Contract value of supply of books exempted, books exempted from GST and supply of printed postcards, taxable supply is 2,72,000, total 9,72,000. Now, first, we need to see the total value of supplies under the contract as taxable supplies, not exempted supplies. So, what is the total value of supplies under the contract, taxable supplies? Taxable supplies 2,72,000. 9 lakhs is not total value of taxable supplies. It is only both taxable and exempted, but we need only taxable. Taxable value of supplies under the contract is 2,72,000 into 100 divided by 118. That will be 2,30,000. The value of taxable supply under the contract does not exceed 2,50 due to that reason. TDS is not applicable. So, you should not take exempted, only taxable. So, TDS is not applicable in this case. Then, but we need to write the note for that. Then, sixth, seventh point. Maintenance of street lights in municipal area of East Delhi. The maintenance contract entered into with the municipal corporation of Delhi also involves replacement of defunct lights and other space. However, the value of the goods is not more than 25 percent of the value of composite supply. Now, in this case, this is an activity entrusted to municipality under article 243 W of the constitution. We have an exemption. Any function entrusted to government under article 243 G or W of the constitution and that service is outsourced to a person and a person is providing a pure service is exempted. And if it is a composite supply involving goods and service also exempted if the value of the goods does not exceed 25 percent of the total. Okay. In this case, the value of goods is not more than 25 percent of the total. Therefore, the service is 
exempted. This composite supply is exempted. If the value of goods under the composite supply exceeds 25% of the total, then it will be taxable. So, therefore, here it is exempted under notification number 12, 2017 as per section 11, read with notification 12, 2017, composite supply involving supply of goods and services provided to government under Article 243 GRW of the Constitution is exempted if the value of goods does not exceed 25% of the total. Therefore, as the same is exempted, TDS under Section 51 is not applicable. So, that we need to write. TDS is applicable only when the supply is taxable because mainly that is to catch the supplier TDS is deducted. Okay. So, when the transaction itself is exempted TDS is not applicable. So, we studied that in non-applicability of TDS. There are some cases TDS is not applicable. If the supplier is unregistered, if the supply is exempted, if the contract value does not exceed 2,50,000 or if the transaction is intrastate supply, but location of recipient and place of supply is in two different states like that. Okay? So, this question is based on that. And there is one point here. This particular services provided to government is only exempted, but services provided to government entity or government authority is not exempted because there is an amendment which says that, you know, any activity entrusted to government under article 243 grw so when you are providing it to government then only it is exempted if it is a government authority or government entity it is not exempted what municipal corporation of delhi will come under government entity no government means central government state government local authority so local authority also will come under government so municipal corporation of delhi is government so, that is what I have given as a note. So, with effect from 1 1 2022, above exemption not available if service are provided to government authority or government entity, exemption available only if service are provided to government including local authority. Local authority is also treated as government. Then, we are moving on to the next question. Take page number 41. Page number 41, question number 6. Jaskaran, a registered supplier of Delhi, has made the following supplies in the month of January. So, these are the supplies. Now, you are required to determine the GST liability. GST liability. So, for this person, we need to determine the GST liability. Here again, we have a breakup of CGST, SGST, IGST means we need to determine whether it is intrastate supply or interstate supply. And uh, there is some information here. Penalty of 10,000 was collected from Shukija gift shop that we will see later. And the transportation of generators, some tax rate is given. And chocolates, fruit juice bottles, the rates are given. Now, let us interpret one by one. And here we need to compute the GST liability. Whenever we are computing the GST liability, check is it supply or not and then check is it taxable or exempted and then who is liable to pay GST. So, these three things we need to see. Number one, supply of 20,000 packages at 30 rupees each to Sukija gift shop in Punjab. Each package consists of two chocolates two fruit juice bottles and a packet of toy balloons. As there are different goods in a single supply and different rates are applicable, so we need to apply the concept of composite supply and mixed supply in section 8 of CGST Act. First, these supplies, even though all are taxable, but are not naturally bundled in the ordinary course of business. Due to that reason, it is not a composite supply. However, as there is a single price, it will become mixed supply and the highest rate should be considered. That is chocolate, 
fruit juice and toy balloons. In these three, the highest rate is 18%. Chocolate should be taken. However, the, this is supply of goods. Location of supplier is Delhi and place of supply is in Punjab. It is chargeable to IGST because as per section 101A of IGST Act, ending point of goods will be taken as a place of supply that is Punjab. And therefore, 6 lakhs into 18% will be taken as 1 lakh 8,000. But here there is one penalty. So, penalty of 10,000 was collected from Sukija gift shop for the payment received with a delay of 10 days. So, as per section 15, subsection 2, clause D, interest, late fee, penalty for delay in receipt of consideration should be included in the value and chargeable to GST at the rate applicable to the original supply. And in the absence of information, interest should be assumed to be inclusive of GST. Therefore, this 10,000 will be inclusive of GST at 18%. So, into 18 divided by 118, so that will be 1,525. So, 1 lakh 9,526 rounded off will be taken. So, how this 1 lakh 9,526 we got? First, we have taken, so 20,000 packages, 20,000 packages are 30 rupees each into 18 percent. This plus, plus. 10,000 rupees interest into 18 divided by 118. So, that is where we got this number. Next, second, 10 generators hired out to Morarji Banquet Halls, Chandigarh, including cost of transporting the generators, 1000 rupees for each generator from Jeskaran's warehouse to Morarji Banquet Halls. Now, this involves two supplies. One is renting of generators and second transportation. Now, in the ordinary course of business, first we need to check these two are taxable or not. So, renting of generators is taxable and transportation is also taxable. So, because the transportation of generator from Jeskaran's warehouse to customer's premises is arranged by Jeskaran through a GTA who pays GST at 12 percent. So, both are taxable. And in the ordinary course of business, it is naturally bundled. So, we learned one assignment. Hiring of chairs, coolers along with transportation. So, that will be coming under composite supply because it is naturally bundled. Usually, in the ordinary course of business, the one who gives the renting of the assets will only do the transportation also. So, naturally bundled and the principal supply is renting of generators. So, therefore, we need to take the applicable rate of renting of generators and here it is a service. Renting of generator is a service and we do not have any specific provision. So, therefore, we apply the general provisions under section 12 subsection 2 that is location of recipient will be taken as a place of supply. Recipient is in Chandigarh. So, location of supplier Delhi, place of supply Chandigarh, therefore, it will become interstate supply and chargeable to IGST. So, 2,50,000 into renting of generators will be 18 percent. So, 18 percent is taken 45,000. Okay. Now, why can't we take it everything as inclusive of GST? So, because you know clearly it is mentioned as amount excluding GST. Then why can't we take this 10,000 also as excluding GST? Because this 10,000 is given separately. So, that is why in the absence of information, we take it as inclusive of GST. Then, number 3, 500 packages, each consisting of one chocolate, one fruit juice bottle, given as free gift to Delhi customers on the occasion of Diwali. Cost of each package is 12, but the open market value of such package of goods of like kind and quality is not available. Input tax credit has not been taken on the items contained in the package. Now, when there is no consideration here, open market value not available, like kind and quality not available, we will take cost plus 10 percent. So, the cost will be 12, 12 plus 10 percent, 13.2, no, the direction is wrong. 
first you should see whether it is supply or not a supply. 500 packages given as gift to Delhi customer, ITC not availed. So, there, there is no consideration. There is no consideration, so 71A will not be applicable. 71C also not applicable because it is not disposal of business asset on which ITC is availed or related party transaction because it is given to customers. So, therefore, it will be coming under not a supply. When it is not a supply, the liability to pay GST shall not arise. Then next, catering services provided free of cost for elder son's business inaugural function in Delhi. Cost of providing the service is 55,000, but the open market value of such services and the service of the like kind and quality is not available. Elder son's catering service provided free of cost for elder son's business inaugural function. It will become supply under 71C. Son, whether or not dependent, will always be treated as related and the value will be determined in terms of rule 28, transaction value not applicable. And in this case, as open market value and like kind and quality is not available, so we are taking cost plus 10%, so 55,000 plus 10%, so 60,500 is taken and catering service, the rate of GST is 18% and location in case of supply of food services, in case of supply of food, beauty treatment, etc. We need to take location where service are actually performed as per section 12 of IGST Act. In this case, the services are performed in Delhi, inaugural function in Delhi. Location where service are actually performed is Delhi, location of supplier Delhi, place of supply Delhi, therefore it will become intrastate supply, chargeable to CGST, SGST, 9%, 9%. So, 60,500 into 9 percent, 60,500 into 9 percent, 5,445. So, this will be taken as the liability. So, like this, in this question, section 7, supply or not, section 8, composite supply, mixed supply, then section 10 of IGST Act, place of supply, section 12 of IGST Act, that is place of supply in case of services, okay and value of supply section 15 read with rules everything is connected so it's a very good question and this question this kind of standard question also can be asked because it's given in rtp 2018 november but thereafter it did not come in any attempt only in rtp it was given so it's a very good question this kind of question can be checked tested then composite supply na so then principal supply rate will be taken even if it is 5%. If it is exempted, you tell me. Won't come. So, ah, highest rate. Then also 18%. But reasoning is it is not a composite supply. It will be mixed supply. Fine. You need break. Ah. Okay. Fine. Yeah. And uh, a small request to all of you. Take some rest, okay, because 2.30 we will start the session and afternoon it will be full of problem discussion only and while discussing this, are you able to recollect the provisions? Yes, that is the objective. When you solve also, you need to do that only. So, you should recollect the provisions rather than seeing the answer. You should not see the answer. If you see the answer, you will never recollect should not see the answer and try to think, okay, what is this about? So, when you are able to recollect the provisions, because in exam you do not have answer and they will not give question paper, answer sheet and say that, check whether it is correct or not. No, no. So, you have to recollect, that is why. Looking into question number 7. So, this is in your page number 71. Page number 71. Renudut Limited enters into contract with XYZ Limited on 2nd July 2020 for a period of two years for construction of a new building to be used for commercial purpose for a total consideration of rupees 150 lakhs. As per the terms of the contract, so Renudut Limited is required to make payment at different stages of completion of the building. So, it is a continuous supply of service. 
a service which takes more than two, three months to complete and involves periodic payment obligations is known as a continuous supply of service. Here, it takes two years for construction of a new building and there is a periodic payment obligation and whether the due date of payment is ascertainable from the contract or not, we need to see. If due date of payment is ascertainable from the contract as per section 13 of 31 of CGST Act, 31 subsection 5, continuous supply of services 31 subsection 5. So, if due date of installment is ascertainable from the contract, the due date of installment is the due date of invoice. If due date of installment is not ascertainable, but the payment is linked to completion of an event, the date of completion of that event, in the absence of that information, the date on which payment is received. Here if you see, so they are linking the payment at different stages of completion of building, namely 50, 75 and 100. So, when 50 percent is completed, 50 percent is completed on 15, 3, 15, 3. So, that is the due date of invoice. Okay. So, now the question is not about due date of invoice. Determine the time of supply. Do not end up writing only due date of invoice and coming out of the exam hall. You will get 2 marks only. This is a question related to time of supply, not due date of invoice. If it is due date of invoice, I would not have given that question in mighty 50. So, it is related to time of supply. But time of supply connected to continuous supply of services. Now, what we need to see is first the due date of invoice, then whether the actual date of invoice is within due date of invoice. If the actual date of invoice is within due date of invoice, then it will be date of invoice or date of payment whichever is earlier. If the actual date of invoice is not within the due date of invoice, then date of completion or date of payment whichever is earlier. So now, first we need to determine what is the due date of invoice. The due date of invoice is this. This is the due date of invoice. This is the due date of invoice. Initial booking 27, then 50 percent 15 3, 75 percent 26, 100 percent completion of building 39. So, that will be taken as the due date of invoice in terms of section 31 subsection 5. Then as per section 13 subsection 2, this is services, services covered under FCM. So, we need to see whether invoice is issued within the due date. First case, yes. So, invoice date or payment date whichever is earlier. So, the time of supply will be 2 7. Then next, 15 3 and 22 3. Invoice issued within the due date? No. Invoice not issued within the due date. Then completion date, completion date or payment date, whichever is earlier, completion date. So, 15 3. Then 26 24 7. Is it within the due date? No. So, completion date or payment date, whichever is earlier. So, 26, last 39, invoice is issued within the due date. So, therefore, invoice date, payment date, whichever is earlier, payment date 29. So, this will be taken as the time of supply, 27, first case 27, next case 15, 3, then 26 and last 39 or 29, whichever is earlier, 29. So, therefore, this, this question connects two things, due date of invoice in case of continuous supply of service and time of supply whenever the transaction is continuous supply of service. Then next one, this is in page number 67. Mr. Mahendra Sharma, an interior decorator registered at Ahmedabad, Gujarat, provided service to one of his clients, XYZ Company Limited, registered at Pune, Maharashtra. The provision of service was completed on 10-8 and the payment received was entered in the books of Mr. Mahendra Sharma on 11-8. With effect from 16-8, applicable GST rate was increased from 5% to 12%. However, payment for the service received was credited in his bank account on 17-8 and the invoice for the same was raised on 23-8. Mr. Mahendra Sharma claimed that he is liable to pay GST at 5% but department took the view that he is liable to pay GST at 12%. <coughs> now, 
you need to determine the correctness of his contention and determine the time of supply and applicable rate of tax. First, what is the change in rate of tax? 16.8. With effect from 16.8, there is a change in rate of tax from 5 to 12. So now 16.8 is the change in rate. Now when the supply is made, when the supply is made, 10.8, supply is before change in rate. When supply is before change in rate, invoice date or payment date, whichever is earlier. So invoice date, what is the invoice date? Invoice date is 23.8 and invoice for the same was raised on 23.8. Now is the payment credited within four working days from change in rate? Yes. Yes, the payment is created in the bank account within four working days from change in rate. As the payment is credited within four working days from the change in rate, we need to take date of entry or date of credit in the bank account, whichever is earlier as the date of payment. What if the payment is not credited within four working days from change in rate? Date of credit in the bank account will be taken as the date of payment. So in this case, date of credit in the bank account is 178 but date of entry in the books is 118 so which should be taken as the date of payment so date of invoice 238 date of payment will be 118 so whichever is earlier will be taken as the time of supply that is 118 will be taken as the time of supply on 118 the rate was 5% so therefore, Mahindra Sharma claimed that he is liable to pay IGST 5% is correct. Department contention is wrong. So therefore, 5% will be taken. Now there is another part in this question. Would your answer undergo any change in the above case? If the payment was credited to the bank account on 14.8 instead of 17.8. So then also the answer will be same. The payment should be credited within 4 working days from the change in rate. Even before that itself it is credited, it is okay. Always it is entry date or credit date, whichever is earlier. So therefore, 11 8 only. The answer will remain the same. That is 11 8 will be taken as the time of supply. Now, in this question, what will be your answer if the payment is credited on so 25 8? The payment is credited on 25 8. 25 8 will be taken as date of payment. Now, invoice date or payment date, whichever is earlier. So, that is 23 8. So, 23 8, there is a new rate. Therefore, 12 percent will be applicable. Like that also the question can be modified. Then, question number 9, which is in page number 73. So this is I say study material question and by seeing this question itself you feel like rare lot of data is given but it's a very very simple question data is only big so sometimes you know we should not see the data rather we should stick on to the provision now first look into the paragraph first paragraph you will understand what is that you need to determine. Andy's Private Limited, a registered supplier, manufactures product A and B. Products means goods. While A is taxable under forward charge. Goods FCM. What is the provision? Goods FCM. Time of supply. We need to determine the time of supply. Because they have given the dates. Determine the time of supply like that they are asking. So, goods FCM. Section 12. Subsection 2 of CGST Act due date of invoice or actual date of invoice whichever is earlier that's it and what is the due date of invoice if supply involves movement of goods at the time of removal supply does not involve movement of goods at the time of delivery now here first for product a we will complete for product a wherever we have product a that we need to see and payment irrelevant Product A is there, payment irrelevant, unwanted information. Receipt for this, unwanted information. Payment for B, then A, product A, manufactured and removed. Ah, 5th March is the due date of invoice. 
at the time of removal and thereafter receipt of product A by buyer irrelevant then invoice for A 4th March. So, 4th March is the actual date of invoice. So, therefore, due date of invoice or actual date of invoice whichever is earlier which is earlier 4th March therefore, the time of supply for product A is 4th March. So, that is the answer ok. So, for product A which is receipt of goods and 4th March being the date of issuance of invoice. So, product A over. Now, we do not have to see anything related to product A. Now, only for product B we need to see. Product B is what? While B is taxable under reverse charge. Now, for B RCM, goods RCM 12 subsection 3. We need to take date on which goods are received by the recipient, date on which recipient has made payment to supplier or 31st day from the date of invoice whichever is earlier. What is the date on which Mr. B, supply of product B, so has received. So, do not see when it is dispatched, see when it is received. Product B manufactured and removed, irrelevant, but product B is received on which date? 23rd March. So, 23rd March, date of receipt of goods. Then, second, date on which payment is made to supplier. There are two payments. See there, product B payment of 2 lakh made by buyer for supply of B. So, on 17 February some payment is made which is 2 lakhs, but invoice is for how much amount? Product B invoice is for 4 lakhs, means when is the balance amount made? Payment made by buyer B balance that is 1st April. Now, we got 3 data here, first is date on which payment is received. So, there are two payments advance, advance and balance for both the provision is same A. So, date of receipt, date of receipt of goods, date of receipt of goods that will be common in both the cases that is 23rd March. 23rd March. Then B, date of payment to supplier, date of payment to supplier, date of payment to supplier, if you see here 17th February and 1st April, 17th February and 1st April, C, 61st or 31st. 31st date from invoice, 31st date from date of invoice. Now, what is the date of invoice of product B, 11th March, 11th March plus 31st day, plus 31st day. So, in March there are 31 days, so 11th April, so 11th April will be taken, 11th April and whichever is earlier. Which is earlier in this case? 17 February. So, time of supply is 17 February. Here, time of supply for this, whichever is earlier, 23rd March. So, that is the answer. With respect to advance, it is 17 February is the time of supply. With respect to balance amount, 23rd March is the time of supply. So, just if we stick on to the provision, take the data from the question and all other information is irrelevant, we will easily arrive at the answer for this. But you should be strong on the provision, provisions you need to know. Then, the next question, question number 10, this is in place of supply, page number 92, page number 92. This is an RTP question given in May 2020, but they have not yet tested this in exam. This is related to rule 3 apportionment under IGST rules. So, advertisement services to government apportionment, various basis of apportionment is there. So, this is that question, have a look into this. PQ, a statutory body deals with all the advertisement and publicity of the government. It issued a release order to Moon Plus channel registered in state A. 
So Moon Plus channel is providing services to PQ statutory body and the place of supply will be each state where the advertisement is provided. For telecasting and advertisement relating to one of the schemes of the government in the month of September, the advertisement will be telecasted in the state of A, B, C, D and E. The total value of the service contract entered into between Moon Plus and PQ is 10 lakhs exclusive of GST. So therefore, the total contract value is 10 lakhs. This 10 lakhs we need to apportion between the states A, B, C, D and E. You are required to determine the place of supply of the service in the instant case as also the value of supply attributable to the states A, B, C, D, E. Further, compute the GST liability of Moon Plus as also advise it as to whether it should issue one invoice for the entire contract value or separate state wise invoices. Now, whenever the place of supply differs, in single invoice we cannot give more than one place of supply because the place of supply as per section 12 is each state where the advertisement is provided which means the place of supply in this case is state A, state B, state C, state D and state E. When each and every state is the place of supply accordingly a single invoice will not be sufficient so there is a need of multiple invoices because the place of supply differs. So therefore multiple invoices means total 5 invoices to be given by Moon Plus channel to that statutory body. Now what is the base of apportionment? As per rule 3 of IGST rules whenever the advertisement is given in television the first apportionment is based on the viewership data last week of the last quarter so by BARC. So we have got this service provided in the month of September so last quarter means June ending June ending June last week we have the viewership data so entire 10 lakhs we need to apportion between three channels first so which means in what ratio so 1 is to 2 is to 1 ratio 1 is to 2 is to 1 ratio so then it will be 5 lakhs uh, 2 lakh 50 5 lakhs and 2 lakh 50,000 and thereafter for channel A it is only in state A. So therefore entire 2 lakh 50 for state A but channel 2 is in two states B and C. So B and C put together it is 5 lakhs. Now that 5 lakhs based on population census we need to apportion. The population census is 9 is to 1. So therefore 4 lakh 50,000 in state B and 50,000 in state C. Then again third channel 50,000 so that is in two states D and E so 2,50,000 in states D and E and it should be apportioned in the ratio of 4 is to 1. So 2,50,000 into 4 by 5 2 lakhs for state D and 50,000 for state E. So this way we need to do the apportionment and arrive at the value and where this moon plus is located moon plus channel is registered in A and <coughs> the first one will be intrastate and all others will be interstate all others will be interstate accordingly the GST liability needs to be determined the rate of GST. So first case 2,50,000 into 9%, 9% CGST, SGST and all other cases it is 18% IGST. So this is this and they need to give multiple invoices. So a simple question only but you need to know what is the basis of apportionment. Not necessary that we need to get a question on only this you know TV. It can be on you know telecom or it can be on the train or it can be in case of train on the length of the track. In case of tickets on the number of stations and if it is on uh, internet deemed to be across the country and in case of telecom it will be telecom subscribers data. So like that depending upon the base of apportionment we need to divide. Then question number 11 this is also in uh, place of supply only page number 99. Page number 99 determine the place of supply in the following independent cases. 
Mr. Shaukar registered boats in New Delhi quota train at New Delhi. Mr. Shaukar sells the goods taken on board by him in the train at Jaipur during the journey. So, what is the place of supply? With respect to goods sold on board a conveyance, it will be starting point of the goods. So, as per <coughs> section 101E, as per section 101E of IGST Act, in case of supply of goods on board a conveyance, we will take starting point of the goods. That is the location where goods are loaded. So, location where goods are loaded is New Delhi. That will be taken as the place of supply in this case. Then second, Vidyut Private Limited imports electric food processes from China for its kitchen store in Noida, Uttar Pradesh. Vidyut Private Limited is registered in Uttar Pradesh. Now, in case of import of goods, as per section 11 of IGST Act, it will be location of importer. So, location of importer is Uttar Pradesh. That will be taken as the place of supply in this case, Noida, Uttar Pradesh. Then, what if in that case, they are importing it to Gujarat, Surat port. Then also, Uttar Pradesh will be taken as the place of supply. It is not the location where they are importing. It is the location of importer. Then, Mr. Atmaram, a manager in a bank, is transferred from Bareilly, Uttar Pradesh to Bhopal, Madhya Pradesh. Mr. Atmaram's family is stationed in Kanpur, Uttar Pradesh. He hires Gokul carriers of Lucknow, Uttar Pradesh, registered in Uttar Pradesh to transport his household goods from Kanpur to Bhopal. Now, in this case, we need to take transportation of goods. For transportation of goods service, it is not B2B. It is B to C because they have not given that he is registered. So, which means it is B to C and we need to take starting point of the goods. If it is India to outside India, always ending point of the goods. In other cases, B to B location of recipient, B to C starting point of the goods. So, where is the starting point of the goods? So, to transport his household goods from Kanpur to Bhopal. So, Kanpur, Uttar Pradesh will be taken as the place of supply. Then, of course, we need to check whether it is 12 or 13. First, we need to check that. It is 12 only because everyone is in India. Then, 4, Bolunath, a registered of New Delhi, opens his savings account in New Delhi branch of Best Bank after undergoing the KYC process. He goes to Amritsar for some official work and withdraws money from the Best Bank's ATM in Amritsar thereby crossing his limit of free ATM withdrawals. Now, in this case, banking and other financial services, section 12 or section 13, section 12. So, we need to take location of recipient in the records of the supplier. And if it is section 13 to account holders, it is location of supplier. But it is section 12. For section 12, general provisions. B2B means location of recipient. Here, we do not have B2B, means B2C. So, location of recipient in the records of the supplier. So, Best Bank records, where is his address? New Delhi. So, New Delhi will be taken as the place of supply in this case. Then, fifth one, Mr. Chakmak, an architect, New Delhi, enters into a contract with Mr. Jishan of New York to provide professional services in respect of immobile properties of Mr. Jishan located in Pune and New York. Now, in this case, we need to take section 13, place of supply determined under section 13 because supplier in India, recipient outside India. And as per section 13, in case of service in relation to immobile property, location of immobile property will be taken as a place of supply. So, the immobile property is located in Pune and New York. Now, if partly in India, partly outside India, why the single contract, the entire place of supply is deemed to be in India. So, that is Pune will be taken as the place of supply because of one section, section 13, subsection 6. Four services, partly in India, partly outside India, entirely it is deemed to be in India. Service in relation to immobile property, performance based service in relation to goods, performance based service in relation to individuals, organizing an event. These four services, why a single contract? If it is partly in India, partly outside India, entirely it should be deemed in India. We discussed that. 
and in india again if it is in pune hyderabad and new york then what we need to do so in india entire amount should be apportioned between pune and hyderabad in what ratio it should be apportioned this is service in relation to immobile property other than accommodation and houseboat so therefore we need to take area of the immobile property as the basis of apportionment rule 4 of igst rules if you are not able to recollect anything related to this whatever i have discussed then it's a warning message you have to revise this because repeatedly i will be telling that place of supply and exemptions are the two chapters which we will easily forget because it's an abstract so whatever is there when you will read we will never apply our mind there and we cannot apply that mind also there as to why this is the place of supply like that so due to that reason we will forget and i request you to please revise as many number of times as you can before exams not on the day of the exam up to the exam so whatever is the time that you have till the time you go for the exam so whenever you feel like one hour or two hours you have time so you you do that okay and uh, so even uh, our friend has given me one suggestion sir why don't you make a podcast so that rather than your youtube etc and all we will listen to whatever summary that you are telling so that that way also you know we can do that definitely i will consider this suggestion and i will do a podcast i will share that voice clip so related to place of supply so just you have to keep you know that listening and see the book and therefore you can revise that completely okay so these two chapters definitely i will do that is place of supply and exemptions even others like mnemonics wherever mnemonics etc and all there so there also i will try to post it okay and uh, that's what mnemonics rcm is also in mnemonics only so wherever that mnemonics i have created for that everything i will post it but only thing these two things you have to so whenever you are traveling or you know you are feeling tired etc listen because these provisions you have to remember no other go okay so in my telegram channel i will post that okay then next uh, see this question number 12 which is in page number 100 this is jan 21 exam question for 9 marks for 9 marks so these also like this specific situation what is the place of supply determine place of supply along with reasons in the following cases so which is in page number 100 determine place of supply number one mr x is an architect kolkata provides interior decorator services to mr y of new york usa in relation to his immobile property located in new delhi so here place of supply is determined under section 13 because one in india other outside india as per section 13 always location of immobile property will be taken as a place of supply here as the immobile property is located in new delhi new delhi will be taken as the place of supply in this case then second mr a chartered accountant registered in kolkata supplies services to his client in bhuvaneshwar registered in bhuvaneshwar orissa now in that case normal chartered accountant services we don't have any specific provision it is general provisions section 12 because both are in india so we need to take location of recipient if they are registered and they are registered so location of recipient will be orissa so bhuvaneshwar orissa will be taken as the place of supply as per section 12 then abc limited of Patna imported certain goods from xyz incorporation of usa the goods were imported through vessel and the delivery of goods were taken at kolkata where after the movement terminates and the goods are stored now even though the goods are imported in kolkata etc and all so we will take in case of section 11 import of goods the location of importer will be taken as a place of supply that is partner will be taken as place of supply next number four mr x registered in gauhati has availed landline services from BSNL. The telephone is installed in the residential premise in Kolkata and the billing address is office of Mr. X in Gauhati. So now in case of landline services, section 12, location where it is installed. So it is installed in Kolkata. That only taken, we will not take billing address and all. So Kolkata will be taken as the place of supply. Then, 
Five, Mr. X residing in Chennai is traveling with Indian airline aircraft and is provided with movie on demand service for 100 rupees as onboard entertainment during Delhi Chennai leg or Bangkok Delhi Chennai flight. In case of services on board a conveyance, both as per section 12 and section 13, it is starting point of the conveyance that is Bangkok will be taken as the place of supply. This we have discussed in assignment. Next, Mr. X of Kolkata purchased online tickets for Aquatica water park in Mumbai. So, as per section 12 as well as 13, in case of admission to an event or place, location of the event or place will be taken as place of supply. So, that is Mumbai will be taken as place of supply. Then next, 7, Mr. Z, an unregistered person of Kolkata sends a courier from New Delhi to his friend in Chennai, Tamil Nadu while he was on trip to New Delhi. This is transportation of goods. Transportation of goods, is it India to outside India? No. So then we need to see B2B or B2C. It is section 12 only. It is not B2B, B2C. B2C starting point of the goods will be taken as a place of supply. The starting point of the goods is New Delhi, from New Delhi. So therefore New Delhi will be taken as the place of supply. Then 8, Mr. X, a registered person in Ranchi, Jharkhand, buy shares from a broker in Patna on NSC Mumbai. Determine the place of supply of brokerage service. Intermediary services under section 12 is general provisions. That is location of recipient. What is the location of recipient? Jharkhand. So Ranchi, Jharkhand, that will be taken as the place of supply. Then XYZ Limited, New Delhi, entered into contract with an Indian airline for supply of biscuit packets for further supply by airline to passengers in Kolkata Gauhati route. The biscuits were loaded on board in Lucknow. Now in that case, as per section 10.1e, the starting point of the goods. So the starting point of the goods is Lucknow. So that will be taken as the place of supply. Then we have next question. This is in value of supply, you can see page number 119, page number 118, then Sikhal Brothers registered in Uttarakhand has supplied 30 tons of chemical at 50,000 rupees per ton excluding taxes to P of Uttarakhand on 8 September 2021. The invoice for the supply has also been issued on the same date. Further. Following additional amounts were also charged from P. Freight 1,80,000, packing charges 1,10,000, weighing charges 20,000. So, freight first transaction value we will take as 50,000 into 30 tons. So, because 50,000 per ton into 30 tons, that will be taken as a transaction value. So, 50,000 into 30. So, that comes to 15 lakhs will be taken as transaction value, right, that will be 1,80,000. So, freight is incidental or other expenses. These are additional amounts which are charged. So, it is not incidental, others, others before delivery. So, definitely it should be included in terms of 15 to C. So, therefore, 1,80,000 we need to add. Packing charges 1,10,000, packing is incidental and weighing charges also incidental. So that is required for making the supply. So therefore it is incidental, it is to be included 1,10,000 and 20,000. Cost of installation specially purchased by single brothers to manufacture the chemical, incidental. It is incidental with respect to this. So therefore we should take 3,10,000, all these are as per 15 to C. When you see more than one item related to the same section, you group it and write a single note. You group it and write a single note that is sufficient. Then as per the terms of the contract of supply, single brothers is required to get the chemical inspected by independent testing agency before the delivery of the same to P. And P has paid such inspection charges amounting to 12,000 directly to the testing agency. Actually, as per the terms of the contract, the single brothers is required to get the chemical inspected. Means any amount that the supplier is liable to pay, 
but which is paid by the recipient should be included in the value as per 15 to B and therefore this 12,000 rupees we need to add. Single Brothers has also received 50 lakhs of subsidy from state government for setting up chemical manufacturing plant in Uttarakhand. So, this is a general subsidy. General subsidy is not directly linked to the price. So, therefore, that 50 lakhs will not be included. So, which means it will be ignored and treated separately. So, then say this 15 lakhs, 1 lakh 80, 1 lakh 10, 20, 3 lakh 10, 12,000 subsidy we will not take. Then next, P limited is required to make payment within 15 days of supply in terms of the contract. However, P, P delayed to make the payment and paid in November 21, thus paid 15,000 as interest. You are required to calculate the GST liability in this case. They are not asking, they are not asking separately. Separately, we need to compute for invoice and for debit note. Now, you have two ways to present this answer. Now, what you can do up to this, you can add, up to this, you can add and you can compute the GST. So, how much is this up to this? 21 lakh, 21 lakh 32,000 and this will be exclusive of GST. So, because it is given as excluding taxes, when the price is excluding taxes, all these expenses also excluding taxes. On the top of that, we will compute GST. So, the GST will be 21 lakh 32,000 into the rate of GST given in the question is 18 percent into 18 percent. So, that will be 3 lakh 83,760. This is for invoice because in November 21 when the amount is received as interest. So, that interest we need to give a debit note. So, therefore, interest late fee or penalty for delay in receipt of consideration a debit note is issued and that interest is inclusive of GST because they have not given any information. So, for debit note, for debit note, so what will be taken as the GST liability? The GST liability for debit note will be 15,000 and the rate will be rate applicable to the original supply that is 18 divided by 118. So, that will be 2,288 and the value will be value of interest will be so remaining out of 10,000 sorry 15,000. 12,712. Now, this way also you can present, you will get marks or this 21 lakh 32,000 plus 12,712 you can add single. So, 21 lakh 44,712, okay, like that you are doing the value, you understood and you show the GST component separately. So, valuation itself you do separately. You write value as per invoice this much, GST as per invoice this much. Then debit note value this much, GST this much or value you do this together but the GST liability alone you show separately for which month. For September how much is the tax liability? For November what is the tax liability? Because in case of interest the due date will be the date on which we raise the debit note on receipt basis. So, therefore, due date will be next month 20th and time of supply for invoice will be the date of invoice September 8th and the due date will be next month 20th. So, as the due date differs for payment of GST, we have done the tax breakup separately. So, and we need to write the notes why it is to be included, why it is to be excluded, etc. and all. Then next one, question 15. So, this, yes. We did. Okay, I will discuss it again. Rolex Forex Private Limited registered in Delhi is a money changer. It has undertaken the following purchase and sale of foreign currency. 1000 US dollars are purchased from Rajesh Enterprises at the rate of 68 rupees per dollar. RBA reference rate for US dollar on the date is 68.60. Now, you need to determine the value as per rule 32.2a and 32.2b. As per 32.2a, that is option 1, first you need to see one of the currency exchange involves Indian rupee and RBA reference rate is available. So, the difference between exchange rate and RBA reference rate, that is 0 0.60, multiply with the units of currency. 
so 1000 into 0.60 so 600 will be taken and second one 2000 dollars are sold to Srinidhi at the rate of 67.5 per dollar RBA reference rate is not available as per 32.2a we need to take the gross amount in Indian rupees and multiply with 1%. So, the gross amount in Indian rupees is 2000 into 67.5 into 1%. So, that will be 1350 will be taken. Suppose if it is rule 32.2b, in 32.2b we need to follow the slab rate model. For that, first we need to know what is the gross amount in Indian rupees. So, 1000 dollars into 68, 68,000 rupees. 68,000 rupees comes in the first slab. In case of first slab, it is 1% of the gross amount or 250 whichever is higher. So, 68,000 into 1%, 680 or 250 whichever is higher. So, therefore, 680 will be taken as the answer. Whereas, in case of, in case of second one, 2000 dollars and 67.5 per dollar gross amount in Indian rupees. 2000 into 67.5, 1 lakh 35,000. For first 1 lakh, it is 1000 rupees. For remaining 35,000, so it will be 0.5 percent. 0.5 percent. Therefore, 35,000 into 0.5 percent. 35,000 into 0.5 percent, 175. 175 plus 1000, 1175 will be taken as the value as per 322B. But in case of 32.2a and 32.2b, option once decided will remain throughout the financial year. Next, question number 16, page number 154. This question is related to input tax credit for a bank financial institution NBFC. We did this. We completed in the class itself. Homework I gave. Okay, then I will discuss. Moksha Bank Limited is engaged in providing services which are both taxable and exempted. You have the following information value of different services of bank for the year ended 31st March. Value of exempted services, interest earned on loans advances 2 lakhs. Value of taxable services 8 lakhs. Input tax credit on input services during the month of April 2021 is 60,000 and that 60,000 includes input services exclusively used for providing exempted services exclusively for taxable. But when we go for 50% option, we ignore that. In case of 50% option, we are not bothered about you know all these things. For 50% option, the meaning of common credit is simple. Total ITC minus used for non-business minus blocked credit. Exclusively used for taxable also treated as common. Exclusively used as exempted also treated as common. But when you go for proportionate ITC method, in case of proportionate ITC method, common credit is after excluding exclusively for taxable and exclusively for exempted. Now, bank wants to determine input tax credit for set of against the output tax during the next month, April, and avail option more beneficial to it. Determine which of the two options is more beneficial. First, we will take 50% option. In case of 50% option, we need to take ITC how much? So, total ITC is 60,000. Now, in this 60,000, no need to exclude this 20 and 10. Entire 60 treated as common. So, which means 30,000 rupees will be the ITC available. And liability wise, if you see 8 lakhs, 8 lakhs into the rate of GST not given, so we will take it as 18 percent. So, 8 lakhs into 18 percent will be 1 lakh 44,000, 1 lakh 44,000 minus 30,000, the net liability will be 1 lakh 14,000. This is in case of 50 percent option, whereas proportionate ITC when you take ITC with respect to taxable fully available and common, common is 60,000 minus 30,000. So, therefore, 30,000 is common. In that common, how much will be reversed? In that common, how much will be reversed? Into 2 by 10. Into 2 by 10 will be reversed. 6,000. So, means remaining we can take. How much we can take? 24 plus 10. So, 34,000 is the ITC. 
So therefore, liability will remain the same. One lakh forty-four minus thirty-four thousand. So one lakh ten thousand will be taken as the net liability. So they can go for option two in this case. That is pro rata reversal. Again, I am repeating in pro rata reversal, fully used for taxable, full credit available, and common credit is total minus used for exempted minus used for taxable remaining. In that remaining, proportionate to taxable credit available. Proportionate to exempted credit not available. Then, question seventeen. This is in page number one seventy six. B and D company, a partnership firm in Nagpur, Maharashtra, is a wholesaler of taxable product P and product Q, exempted by way of notification. The firm supplies these products only in the eastern part of Maharashtra. all the procurements both goods and services of the firm are from the suppliers registered under regular scheme in the state of maharashtra the firm pays tax under composition scheme b and d company has furnished the following details with respect to its turnover exclusive of taxes and stock so now they are under which scheme regular scheme or composition scheme composition scheme but they make procurements from the persons who are under regular scheme now two products they are making taxable product p and q exempted product and they are a trader they are a trader under composition scheme they are not manufacturer so being a trader under composition scheme they need to pay gst only on taxable supplies not on exempted supplies product p for the first quarter ending 30th june and 30th september second quarter and thereafter stock details are given now thereafter some big list is given finally what we need to do compute the itz credited to the electronic credit ledger of b and d company when it exits the composition scheme and becomes liable to pay tax under regular scheme in accordance with the provisions of 181c make suitable assumptions wherever required stock is valued at cost price now we need to know when are they crossing 1.5 crores or 150 lakhs because a person opting for composition scheme being a trader so he is eligible for composition scheme during the current year up to 150 lakhs after crossing 150 lakhs they are disqualified from the composition scheme for that first we need to know what should be taken in aggregate turnover both taxable and exempted so therefore first quarter what is the total first quarter what is the total 60 plus 17 lakh 65000 that is 77 lakh 65000 by second quarter what is the total total of first quarter plus second quarter total 1 crore 44 lakh 65000 this is the total still they are in composition scheme for first quarter and second quarter now in the third quarter Starting from first October, they gave the data. Now take that one crore forty-four lakhs sixty-five thousand sixty-five thousand plus two lakh three thousand plus two lakh three thousand. But don't talk, pa. Don't disturb others. If you know answer, shut everything and listen, please. Then two lakh three thousand. So two lakh three thousand one crore forty-six lakh. Sixty-eight thousand, and again plus. So why we need to add this? Why we need to add this? So because we need exactly on which date we are crossing one crore fifty lakhs. So one crore forty-six lakh sixty-eight thousand plus one lakh thirty-eight thousand two fifty. So still one crore forty-eight lakh six thousand two fifty. Then again add one lakh six thousand two fifty. That is one crore forty nine lakh twelve thousand five hundred. So plus ninety two thousand five hundred. So that is exactly on this date we are crossing one crore fifty lakhs. Now third October we are crossing composition scheme to normal scheme. Now we need to take the closing stock as on second October. Second October is the closing stock date. On that second October, whatever is the closing stock, 
on that GST paid can be availed as ITC. On 2nd October, whatever is the closing stock on that GST paid can be availed as ITC. Now we need what is the closing stock as on 2nd October. For that, we need the stock information. We have the stock information as on 30th September and 31st October. Means in between these dates, we will have this stock as on 2nd October. Now, so which product we need to take only product P because product Q is exempted. So definitely when purchasing also there is no GST paid, only product P. Now, how to get this? So for that, we would have learnt in foundation single entry one equation. Opening stock plus purchases minus closing stock is cost of goods sold. Opening stock plus purchases minus closing stock is cost of goods sold. Now, opening stock as on 110. Opening stock as on 110. Purchases for 2 days. Purchases for 2 days. 110 and 210. Minus closing stock. That only we need to find. That we don't know. That we need to find. And then we need to take cost of goods sold for the 2 days. 110 and 210. What is the cost of goods sold? Now, opening stock of product P as on 110 is 360,000. So, 360,000 plus purchases we need to take. Here, if you see this paragraph, okay, that is stock as on 31st October, uh, then we need opening stock as on 1st October, which means as on 30th September, that is 10 lakhs. 10 lakhs we will take. So, 10 lakhs plus, plus, we need to take purchases, see this paragraph, the entire stock of product P and Q available with the firm as on 30th September is purchased during the said half year except a consignment of product P valuing 3 lakhs which was purchased in the April month of the preceding year. The said stock could not be sold during the month of October. In the current financial year in the month of October, no purchases were made which means this is zero minus closing stock, we need that closing stock equals to cost of goods sold. So, purchases were sold with a profit margin of 20% on sales. So, take sales and reduce 20%, you will get cost of goods sold. What is the sales of product P for these two days? The sale of product P for these two days is 4 lakhs. 4 lakhs into 80% because 20% on sales is profit then 80% on sales will be cost of goods sold. So, 4 lakhs into 80%, 3 lakh 20 thousand. So, therefore, closing stock as on 210 is 6 lakh 80 thousand and on this 6 lakh 80 thousand fully we cannot take ITC because in this 6 lakh 80 there is some goods which are purchased beyond one year because as per 18 subsection 2 there is a condition that we can avail the ITC on closing stock if the goods are purchased within one year prior to the closing stock date. So, in this 3 lakh worth of goods is purchased beyond one year. So, April month of the preceding financial year closing stock is 2nd October. So, beyond one year. So, due to that reason that 3 lakhs should be taken out and after taking 3 lakhs so, we will get 3,80,000. So, on that 3,80,000, what is the rate of GST that is given in the question? So, the rate of GST not given, so we can take it as 18%. So, into 18% will be taken, that will be the ITC. So, 3,80,000 into 18%, 68,400. That is 34,200 CGST, 34,200 SGST. So, this is on 181C, 181C. Now, I wanted to answer this question. So, for different computation, this is okay. 181C, how much is the ITC that will be availed? Now, suppose they give a question. Compute the GST payable under composition scheme for the same question. Compute the GST payable under composition scheme for the same question. Now, 
what will happen first we need to take for the first quarter for the first quarter for the first quarter only with respect to product p not with respect to product q because being a trader they need to pay gst only on taxable turnover for product p what is the turnover 60 lakhs so therefore 60 lakhs into 1% so that is 60,000 is the GST liability for first quarter. Then second quarter, what is the GST liability composition scheme? So still they are in composition scheme for second quarter, 50 lakhs into 1%, 50,000. Whereas they are leaving the composition scheme only on second October. So for third quarter, so we need to take till 2nd October, how many, like how much of transaction is there? 4 lakhs. So on that 4 lakhs into 1%, that will be 4,000. So this will be taken as the GST payable under composition scheme. Okay. GST payable under composition scheme. Now. I may also ask an another question if I am setting the question paper, GST payable under normal scheme for October, under normal scheme for October month, October month, again only with respect to product P, how to do this? Opening stock as on 310 plus purchases during October minus closing stock as on 31st October equals to cost of goods sold. Opening stock as on 310, opening stock as on 310 is closing stock as on 210 closing stock as on 210 already we computed as 6 lakh 80000 so 6 lakh 80000 plus purchases zero minus closing stock as on 3110 is given in the question 3 lakh 60000 3 lakh 60 so therefore minus 3 lakh 60 equals to cost of goods sold so therefore cost of goods sold is 6 lakh 80 minus 3 lakh 60, 3 lakh 20,000 at profit, profit at 25 percent because 20 percent on sales, on cost it will become 25 percent. So, 3 lakh 20,000 plus 25 percent that will be 4 lakhs is taken as the sales of month October and for this into 18 percent you will get the GST liability under regular scheme for the month of October that is 72,000 is the GST payable. So same question but different computation. One is related to availment of ITC and closing stock. Another is how much GST they need to pay under composition scheme. Then how much they need to pay GST under normal scheme. Then closing stock. Ah, ITC we do not have any invert supply data and ITCS if they are asking net GST liability this is gross liability if they ask net GST liability we availed some ITC na on this that is 3 lakh 80,000 into 18 percent something 68,400 so that can be adjusted from this 72,000 okay but if they ask net liability So, it is a very good question, I did not create this question, it is from RTP, November 18 RTP, I say RTP and thereafter they did not test this question any time, so long time due. Question number 18, which is in page number 185, this is related to manner of apportionment of credit in case of inputs and input service, rule 42. Van Shopee is a registered supplier of both taxable and exempted goods. 
registered under GST in the state of Rajasthan. Van Shopee has furnished the following details for a month. Details of sales, sales data they gave, supply of taxable goods, supply of goods not leviable to GST. So this will give you the E by F ratio. So exempted. What we need to do computation here? You are required to compute the following. ITC credited to electronic credit ledger, common credit, ITC attributable to exempted supplies based on common credit and 4 even net GST payable. Now this we will stick on to the format. That format is T, T1, T2, T3, that one. But first we have outward supply data. This outward supply data will give E by F ratio. So E by F exempted supply is 10 divided by 60. So 1 by 6 is the E by F ratio. Then details of goods purchased being sold in the shop. Taxable goods 45 lakhs. So it will be coming in T1. T1 or T4 or T4. So invert supply used for taxable outward supplies T4. Goods not leviable to GST. First of all we have not paid GST at all on this. It will not come in T itself. Then details of expenses. Monthly rent payable for the shop. We pay GST. But this cannot be segregated anywhere because in the same shop we are selling both taxable goods as well as exempted goods. So therefore it is a common credit so we cannot segregate anywhere. Telephone expenses 30,000 for landline phone installed at the shop not a block credit it is available. 20,000 towards mobile phone bills of the employees mobile phones are given to employees for official use. So it is used in the codes or furtherance of business. It is available and it cannot be kept anywhere in the you know segregation because it is a common credit. It is for common use for both taxable and exempted supplies. Audit fees paid to a chartered accountant, 35,000 for filing income tax return and statutory audit of preceding financial year and 25,000 for filing GST return. ITC we can take but it will come under common. Premium paid on health insurance policies taken for specified employees of the shop as per company's policy. So it is a blocked credit. It will come in T3. And pride paid to GTA for invert transportation of goods not leviable to GST. So first we pay GST because on freight we pay GST but it will come in T2 used for exempted. Pride paid to GTA for invert transportation of taxable goods. We pay GST and it will come in T4 used for taxable. Goods given as free samples not included in the taxable value which means it will not become supply. So therefore blocked credit. We pay GST but it will come in T3. All the above amounts are exclusive of all kind of taxes wherever applicable. All purchases and sales made by Van Shopee or within Rajasthan all the purchases are made from registered suppliers. All the other expenses incurred are also within Rajasthan. Assume wherever applicable for the purpose of reverse charge payable by the van shopping. Means on this GTA they pay GST under RCM. So this is RCM liability. RCM liability. And with respect to the others GST will be 6%, 6% and 12% in all other cases. There is no opening balance in the credit ledger. Now. We need to prepare that format T that is total ITC minus T1 minus T2 minus T3. So the balance that we get is known as C1 that is credit availed in electronic credit ledger and minus T4 we will get C2 that is common credit and from common credit we need to deduct D1 and D2. Now, T will be total GST paid, total GST paid on all invert supplies, on taxable goods we pay GST. So 45 lakhs into 12%, 45 lakhs into 12%, 45 lakhs into 12%, 5 lakh 40,000. Then next number, next number is 4 lakhs on that there is no GST at all. Then next number 3 lakh 50. On 3,50 again 12% we pay 42,000, 42,000. 
So then next we have telephone expenses 50,000, 50,000 into 12 percent, 6,000. Then audit fees 60,000. We have only one rate, we do not have any other rate, that is why we are taking 12 percent. So 60,000 into 12 percent, 7,200. And then premium paid on health insurance, we first pay GST, definitely we pay GST. 10,000 into 12 percent, 1,200 and GTS service, GTS service we need to pay under RCM, so 50,000 into 5 percent, 50,000 into 5 percent, 2,500 and then next number 1,50, 1,50 into 5 percent, 7,500, then last one goods purchased and given us samples, 5,000, so 5000 into 12 percent, 600, the total of this is T, 5,40 plus 42,000 plus 6,000 plus 7,200 plus 1,200 plus 2,500 plus 7,500 plus 600, 6 lakh 7,000, 6 lakh 7,000 is T. T1, we do not have anything in T1, non-business we do not have first of all. So, T1 nothing, T2, what and all will come in T2, already we have written only one, that is 50,000, 50,000 into 5 percent, that is 2,500. Then T3, T3 we have two things, one is premium paid on health insurance, 10,000 into 12 percent, 1,000. 200 and then goods distributed as free samples 600 that is 1800. The balance amount will be ITC availed in electronic credit ledger 607000 minus 2500 minus 1800 that is 602700 is ITC availed, ITC availed in electronic credit ledger minus T4. T4, so out of these invert supplies, we need to see which is in T4, that is 1,50,000 into, so 5 percent, that is 7,500 and even we purchase some goods. So here we purchase some goods, 45 lakhs into 12 percent, that is 5,40,000. So now we get common credit. 6,2700 minus 7,500 minus 5,40,000 which will be 55,200 will, will be common credit and common credit attributable to exempted supply 55,200 into E by F that is 1 by 6 exempted to total exempted to total 1 by 6. So, that will be 9,200 and D2 we do not have anything because we do not have any invert supply used for non-business purpose. So, 5 percent reversal is not required. Now, this is the ITZ reversed, ITZ reversed. So, therefore, what is the net eligible ITZ for set off? Net eligible ITZ for set off is 2700 minus 9200, not 46,000. So, therefore, 5 lakh 93,500. Now, we have to compute the liability FCM, RCM. Now, gross liability, gross liability under FCM. So, check the question and see what is the taxable turnover. So, 50 lakhs. 50 lakhs into 12 percent, 6 lakhs, that is FCM liability, RCM liability is 10,000, how 10,000, 2 lakhs, 50,000 and 1 lakh 50, these two things we are paying GST under RCM, that is 2 lakhs into 5 percent, 10,000, minus ITC utilized, minus ITC utilized, 5 lakh 93,500, now you will get net liability net liability under FCM is 6500, RCM will be 10,000. So, this is taken as the answer.
you can see there net liability 8,250, 8,250. How? Total of this 6,500 plus 10,000, 16,500 divided by 2, CGST, SGST, 8,250. So, what happened here is that we need to do every computation here, CGST, SGST separately. Okay, because everything will be intrastate supply, okay, due to that reason. And uh, next, uh, you need to write this separately. Input tax credit credited to electronic credit ledger. Input tax credit credited to electronic credit ledger is 600 Then common credit available for apportionment is 55,200. And next question, ITC attributable towards exempted supplies out of common credit. So that is how much you reverse. So, 9,200 and thereafter finally net GST payable. So, that is this. This is the net GST liability. Then next question. Page number 203. So, Kaushal Manufacturers Limited registered in Delhi is a manufacturer and supplier of electronic home appliances. It is paying tax under regular scheme. It supplies the electronic home appliances in the domestic as well as overseas market. For supplies in other states of India, the company has appointed consignment agents in each such state except Gurgaon, Haryana and Noida, Uttar Pradesh where goods are supplied directly from its Delhi warehouse. In the month of January, consignment of electronic home appliances were sent to Cardinal Electricals Private Limited and Rochester Technos agents of Kaushal Manufacturers Limited in Punjab and Madhya Pradesh respectively. Cardinal Electricals Private Limited and Rochester Technos supplied these electronic home appliances under their invoices to stores located in their respective states for 40 lakhs and 70 lakhs respectively. Open market value of such appliances is not available. Now, first we are making supply to a agent. That agents are supplying it to the subsequent unrelated person. In case of principal agent transaction, the value should be taken under rule 29. As per rule 29, it will be either open market value or 90% of the resale price at the option of the supplier. Here as there is no open market value, so we take 90% of the resale price. So, 40 lakhs plus 70 lakhs, 110 lakhs, 110 lakhs into 90 percent that is 99 lakhs will be taken as the value under rule 29. Here the value will be value under rule 29 is 99 lakhs. 99 lakhs is taken as the value. Then further in January electric electronic home appliances have been supplied to Ron Technomart, a wholesale dealer of electronic home appliances in Noida. Uttar Pradesh for a consideration of 23 lakhs from its Delhi warehouse, Kaushal Manufacturers Limited owns 75 percent shares of non Technomart. So, now this will be coming under value under rule 28. So, what is the value under rule 28? So, that is open market value or like kind and quality correct or cost plus 10 percent. And if recipient is eligible for full ITC, they can take open market value deemed as transaction value, but recipient is not eligible for full ITC. So, we need to take open market value. Why can't transaction value be taken? Because recipient is not eligible for full ITC. Okay, why can't we take 90 percent of the resale price? That data is not available. We do not have that option is there 90 percent of resale price but data not available. So, that is why we are taking open market value that is 30 lakhs understood. Then Kaushal Manufacturers Limited also provides repair and maintenance services to electronic appliance manufacturers located in India. The company has also furnished the following information for the month of January. Supply of electronic home appliances to wholesale dealers of such appliances in Delhi. So, normal sale here first we need to see location of supplier Delhi for this agents where the agents are located Punjab and Madhya Pradesh. So, therefore, it will become inter and next 
Ron Technomart, a wholesale dealer in Noida, Uttar Pradesh. So again, it will also be inter because location of supplier is Delhi. Then this one, supply of electronic home appliances to wholesalers in Delhi, intra, and it will be chargeable to GST, 84 lakhs. Electronic home appliances supplied to Anchor Electricals Incorporation USA under LUT. Consideration received in convertible foreign exchange. Zero rated, no liability. We don't have to pay any GST in this case. Because it is exports upon payment of GST or without payment of GST. Without payment of GST under LUT. Then, a repair and maintenance service provided to Unitech Limited, an electronic appliance manufacturer located in Delhi. So, intra, intra. So, repair and maintenance service. So, means general provisions. Performance based service in relation to goods. Section 12, general provisions. So, location of recipient will be taken that is Delhi. So, place of supply Delhi and on that we need to pay GST. Advance receipt towards repair and maintenance service to be provided to Orilec Limited, an electronic appliance manufacturer located in Delhi. Now, in this case, so advances towards services, but repair and maintenance service is provided in February, but this is for the month of January. Will it be taxable? Yes. And again, it will become intra because the time of supply in case of time of supply in case of services time of supply in case of services will be invoice or payment whichever is earlier so therefore it will be taken as the payment received date so 7 lakhs then advance received for electronic home appliances to be supplied to novik electricals a wholesale dealer of such appliances in gurgaon haryana no gst in this case why no GST in this case? Because in case of goods, the time of supply will be due date of invoice or actual date of invoice, whichever is earlier. There is no GST payable on advances in case of goods. So now, accordingly, we need to take the liability here. So prepare a table, CGST, SGST, IGST. And first one is inter, value 99 lakhs. So 99 lakhs into 5%. And then next one also inter value 30 lakhs so 30 lakhs into 5 percent and next one intra home appliances so 84 lakhs into 2.5 2.5 then there is no gst lut 8 lakh 40 thousand this is repair and maintenance service will be 9 percent 9 percent and advance receipt for repair and maintenance service 7 lakhs 9 percent 9 percent and last case there is no gst that is the total so, this is how you need to arrive at the liability. This question is related to purely valuation and place of supply. Value of supply and place of supply that is connected here. Same, similar, similar. Then question number 20. This is in page number 219. Page number 219. Super Liver Limited is engaged in manufacture of taxable electronic goods. Its two manufacturing units are located in Mumbai and Nagpur. And both the units are registered under GST in the state of Maharashtra. The company has another manufacturing unit in Bengaluru registered under GST in the state of Karnataka and a retail showroom located in Ahmedabad registered under GST in the state of Gujarat. So, they have two units, Mumbai unit and so three units. Huh? So, Nagpur they have, Mumbai they have and even Karnataka also they have, let them have. We do not have any botheration. But what we need to determine in this question is with the help of the above information you are required to determine the value of exempted supply under GST as provided by Nagpur unit and Mumbai unit. Exempted supply means not if it is exempted, nil rated, non-taxable. No, exempted supply for the purpose of ITZ under 17 subsection 3. 
So the meaning of exempted supply for the purpose of 17 subsection 3 is notified as exempted, nil rated, non-taxable, supply covered under RCM, sale of land, sale of building, sale of securities, in case of sale of land, stamp duty value, in case of sale of building, stamp duty value, in case of sale of securities, 1% of sale value of securities, that should be taken. Now see this, now that provision you should write first, huh? not like how we said, clearly you should write. And sale of taxable goods, 12 lakh 50, it will not come. We are asking, they are asking exempted. So, it will not come in exempted, ignore. Interest received on fixed deposits with nationalized bank. Interest, even though exempted for payment of GST, but for availment of ITC, it is taxable for a person other than bank financial institution NBFC. So, it will be taxable. So, do not take it into exempted. Sale of securities, such securities were purchased for 2,75,000, sold for 4,50,000. So, 4,50,000 into 1%, 4,500, we will take as exempted, okay? Clear, yeah? So, 4,500, we will take as exempted for Mumbai unit. Then, next, sale of agricultural land in the vicinity of the manufacturing plant, Stamp duty value was paid on, stamp duty was paid on 1 crore 85 lakhs. So, that itself is the stamp duty value. That itself is the stamp duty value. Stamp duty paid on this means that is the stamp duty value. And 1 crore 85 lakhs, even that value is only given. So, 1 crore 85 lakhs we will be taking as exempted for Nagpur. Then, sale of old factory building which was not used anymore for 90 lakhs, but the stamp duty was paid on 75 lakhs. So, stamp duty value is 75 lakhs that should be taken. And then we have to see transfer of actionable claims other than lottery betting gambling. It is not a supply. When it is not a supply, it will not be coming in exempted. So, therefore, this total 75 lakh 4500 and 1 crore 85 lakhs will be taken as the meaning of exempted supplies for the purpose of ITC and determine the value of exempted supply. Will your answer be different if it is the value of exempted supply is determined for the purpose of apportionment of ITC? So, suppose if it is meaning of exempted for payment of GST, first what we did is meaning of exempted for apportionment of ITC, meaning of exempted for payment of GST if you see. In case of Mumbai unit, 12 lakh 50, 4 lakh 50, 90 lakhs. All these are not exempted. So, for Mumbai unit, 0. For payment of GST, meaning of exempted is 0. For payment of GST, for payment of GST, not for ITC purpose. For payment of GST, the meaning of exempted supply is only 3. Notified as exempted, nil rated, non taxable. So, 4 lakh 50 is not supply, first of all. And 90 lakhs is also not a supply. So, that is why it will not come in exempted supply for payment of GST. For Nagpur unit, what will be the meaning of exempted for payment of GST? Only interest. Sale of land, building will not come. And transfer of actionable claims, not a supply. So, only one will come under exempted, that is 1 lakh 8000 is treated as the meaning of exempted. So, this is RTP November 22. RTP November 22 question, not asked in exam, not asked in exam. So, this is mainly to distinguish between the meaning of exempted supply for payment of GST for availment of ATC. In detail, I gave one table, 10 points for payment of GST for availment of ATC. So, this question is coined based on that, okay. Actually, I after seeing this in RTP, I felt so happy. Wow. This question to definitely come for number 22. But they disappointed me, they did not ask this question. So, maybe 23, let us see. See, actually, RTP questions itself, that many questions are there which is not yet tested in exam. So, one easy way I will tell you all RTP questions, if you solve itself, all RTP questions, if you solve itself, there are chances that from that at least two questions will come in exam, all RTP, okay. Enough pa, so 14 marks, 
14 marks, 14 marks like that, 28 marks only from RTPs if you get and remaining and all you can manage from others. See concept you will be learning, ditto the same question will come and you know how, how to approach that question. Once you know how to approach that question, it is okay and at least two questions, known questions if you are getting great here. In the paper, if entire question paper is like you know blank rather than that, two questions, known question means fast we can do and easily we can approach and confidence will have okay definitely it will be correct because we solved it so that happens then all rtp all rtp i have given in the book all rtp questions till november 22 may 23 i have not included in the book may 23 rtp i have not included in the book because by the time this book was printed may rtp did not come even at the time when we started our batch also may 23 rtp did not come on these Second day, May 23, RTP came. So, therefore, how I can include it? No, I cannot do time travel and all I know that. So, but May 23, RTP, I will post it in my YouTube. So, in my YouTube, I will make a discussion on May 23, RTP. That video will be there, okay? MTPs are taken from RTPs only. MTP questions are taken from RTPs only and they create the questions. So, therefore, you re restrict yourself to RTPs first. RTP questions, if you are solving itself, good standard questions are there and there are chances the same type of questions could come, okay. Next, that is why in that mighty 200, I included mostly RTP questions, mostly. In that mighty 200, I included mostly RTP questions only. Lokem Palanpur, look into page number 196. Lokem Palanpur Gujarat has entered into contract with our refinery Abu Road Rajasthan on 1st July to supply 10 valves on FOR basis. The following information is provided in this regard. They gave some details like price details etc. Assume CGST, SGST rates be 9% each. Opening balance of ITs is given. All given amounts are exclusive of GST. Then they also gave the purchase details. Purchase details. Work out the net GST liability payable from electronic cash ledger after making suitable assumptions. Like this, when they give outward supply data, inward supply data and ask us to compute the net GST liability. This is like a mini version of that 14 marks question. Okay. So now what we need to do, whenever you come across a 14 marks question, question number 1. So we need to prepare total 4 statements. Statement number 1, statement showing computation of, statement showing computation of GST payable GST payable under FCM and particulars value note CGST, SGST, IGST and we need to know how many transactions are there? Some 5 transactions. 5 transactions means 1 page we will leave. 1 page. So, therefore, this 1 page information we are leaving for first statement. Then, there could be some details related to RCM also. And on that RCM, we do not have to take any liability, but that is our outward supply which is covered under RCM. We do not have to take, but our inward supply on which we need to pay GST under RCM, we need to take. Statement showing computation of GST payable under RCM. Statement showing computation of 
GST payable under RCM on invert supplies. This is on invert. Same way, particulars, value, then note. CGST, SGST, IGST. Then, next statement, statement number 3. So, this RCM definitely we have to check here. Availed works contract, laid pipelines, so telecommunication. So, we do not have that much. In this invert supply, we do not have Sir, CG got salads. That much is not there, but that you will come to know. So, therefore, just some two, three lines enough because there are nothing. But in case, suppose if it is there, so we need to update it. Then next, third statement, statement showing computation of, statement showing computation of ITZ available on invert supplies, on invert supplies. Particulars, particulars, value, note, CGST, SGST, IGST. Now, last statement is computation of net GST liability that we do not have to prepare now. So, when we begin the question, you need to prepare these three statements. Leave space, okay, no issue, one full page, no issue. Reason being, when we read the transaction, we need to know in the appropriate place we need to write and write the note. So, therefore, page 1, page 2, page 3 for this three statement, page 4, is for notes, page 4 is for notes and finally we do the statement, that statement will be statement showing computation of net GST payable. So like that, you if you prepare the answer sheet, no, so you will not have any trouble, you read the question, immediately you write it in the appropriate place and time also will be managed. So whenever you are taking invert supply under RCM, it should come in two statements, one in second statement for payment of GST and it should also come in third statement because you can avail it as ITC. Now, first transaction, list price of the wall 1 lakh exclusive of taxes and one of the conditions, see this do not require this statement and all. Not for this question I said. I said for a question number 1 which is involving of 14 marks and finally then the next thing that you will write is notes to above and here you can update that notes accordingly, note number. So and those notes, you read a transaction, you put it there, go to that note and write that note and finally statement number 4. Statement number 4 is statement that is after preparing everything, notes everything you have written. Finally, statement showing computation of net GST payable, computation of net GST payable. So, whenever you are answering a consolidated question, that is question number 1, because in question number 1, they give lot of transactions like sales transactions, purchase transactions, lot of transactions will be there. For that, you need to follow this four statement approach and definitely you will not get confused and whenever you are practicing itself, you please incorporate this methodology. Not necessary that this much you need to write, at least in rough, you try to create so that you will know spacing, how to present, what notes to be written, etc. So, this question is different, this question is not like multiple transactions, there is only one transaction. But for that one transaction, first we need to do the valuation, 
and then we need to do the ITC valuation into GST gross liability and minus ITC we will have net liability. First look into the valuation list price of the valve is 1 lakh so take that as transaction value 1 lakh will be taken as a transaction value. So 1 lakh is taken as transaction value and to this 1 lakh so number of valves is 10 valves so into 10 so that will be 10 lakhs. One of the conditions of the contract is that Flowchem should ensure a two stage third party inspection for the valves during the manufacturing process cost of inspection 15,000 is directly paid by our refinery to the testing agency. So which means 15 to be any amount that the supplier is liable to pay but which is paid by the recipient should be included in the value. So 15,000 rupees for 10 valves not 15,000 per valve. So therefore add entire 15,000 do not multiply with 10. Our refinery requires a special packing for the valves cost of special packing is 10,000. So section 15 to C it is not incidental but it is others why because it is special packing. So means generally this is not there but only when we request recipient request it will be there. So therefore it is collected before delivery of the goods yes. So it is other than incidental and charged by supplier to recipient before delivery of the goods therefore it is to be included and the given price it is not included so therefore we need to add. Flow came arranges for erection and testing of the wall supplied by it at our refinery cost of erection is 15,000. So they arrange for erection and testing and as per the contract they need to do the installation at our refinery correct low cam they are arranging here means installation. So installation even though after delivery but it is incidental should always be included in the value 15 to C. Then goods are dispatched with tax invoice on 20th July and they reach the destination at Abu Road on 21st July. Lorry freight 5000 has been paid by our refinery directly to the lorry driver that will not come. Any expenditure incurred by recipient on his own account. So it will not be included and uh, therefore total. So how much? 10 lakh 45000. Uh. One second, one second. Pre on road basis, sorry, pa. Pre on road basis means that you know I have to deliver the goods to that person's location. In case of FOR, I have to deliver the goods to that person's location. So, in that case, this 5000 rupees is the liability of the supplier but which is incurred by the recipient. So 15 to B. So 5000 we need to take. 5000 when we take then it will be 10 lakh 45000 should be taken as the value. I missed that FOB value. So 10 lakh 45000 and on that IGST is how much? Why IGST? Where supplier is located? Gujarat and where recipient is located Rajasthan. So therefore we will be taking interstate 101A supply involves movement of goods or 101D. So in case of goods assembled or installed at site. So here they have not given anything about the assembly or installation so that is why we are applying 101A. So ending point of the goods. Ending point of the goods is Rajasthan interstate supply. Then. IGST will be applicable in this case. Thereafter, we have some invert supply data. Opening balance CGST 20,000, SGST 20,000. So that you take first. Opening balance of ITC CGST 20, SGST 20. Then next one, availed service of works contractor to erect foundation for fixing machinery to the earth in the factory. So generally, any service in relation to construction of any mobile property is blocked credit. However, if it is installation of a plant and machinery, 
So construction of a plant and machinery ITC available. So 5,000, 5,000. Then laid pipelines from the water source outside the factory up to the gate of the factory for the purpose of production facility. Now, generally plant and machinery IT is available, but pipeline laid from the water source outside to the factory up to the gate of the factory, means pipelines laid outside the factory, so IT is not available. Pipelines laid outside the factory because see the wording from the water source outside the factory up to the gate of the factory, not within the factory. Within the factory means IT is available. So, plant and machinery exclude telecommunication towers and pipelines laid outside factory gate. For the purpose of smooth and convenient mobile communication in its factory, it has installed telecommunication tower. So, that is also excluded, that will not come. It has entered into agreement with travel company to provide home travel facility to its employees on vacation. Is it under a statutory obligation? No. So, home travel or leave travel concession. So, like travel benefits extended to employees on vacation, ITC not available. It has entered into an agreement with fitness center to provide wellness service to its employees after office hours. This is also not under statutory obligation, membership of a club, health and fitness center, ITC not available, only 5000 and 5000, so CGST, SGST, so 25000 is the ITC. Now gross liability if you see 1,88,100 minus CGST, SGST credit can be placed for payment of IGST liability, so 1,38,100 is the net, IG, net IGST liability, clear? Then next. Papa, come again. Ah, X factory. X factory. If it is X factory case, means the contract is to deliver the goods at our location. So, therefore, that freight will not be included. So, means it will come under recipient incurring the expenditure on his own account. Okay. I did not read FOR. So, I thought it as normal delivery at our gate. So, therefore, if it is delivery at his place, then it is FOR. Okay. So, then we need to include. So, we will take a break. And thereafter, we will continue from question number 22. Look into page number 209. Page number 209, this is also related to input tax credit. Job work, principal A limited supplied fabric to job worker, Taylor Lala to manufacture garments. Whether Taylor Lala can use his own raw material so, further, whether job worker can take credit on thread or button. So, whenever the major goods are supplied by the principal manufacturer to the job, job worker, job worker can take ITC with respect to the goods which are used by them in the job work. We discussed this point. Job worker also can buy, for example, little bit of products for processing, they can buy the thread button, etc. on that they can take ITC, there is no restriction. So, that is the answer for the first one. They can take credit, but provided if the job worker is registered. Whether job worker making intrastate supply of rupees 8 lakhs and interstate supply of rupees 10 lakhs is liable to get registered in a year. So, they are making services. No, their compulsory registration will not come. Job worker is supply of service. Supply of service interstate, there is no compulsory registration. So, only in case of interstate supply of goods, they are compulsorily required to get registered. So, in this case, 8 lakhs and 10 lakhs, 18 lakhs, it does not exceed 20 lakhs. So, they are not required to get registered. Then, third one, whether principal can sell garments manufactured from the place of job worker. Yes, the principal rather than bringing it back to the principal's place can directly sell it from the job worker's place and accordingly raise the invoice. And if the job worker is unregistered, the principal should declare the job worker's place as principal's additional place of business. Section 143 says that principal may supply inputs after completion of job work within one year or three years from the place of business of job worker only if he declares job worker's place as his additional place of business or if job worker is 
registered. Further, commissioner has power to notify certain goods which principal cannot supply from the place of business of job worker. Then, four, what are the documents to be issued for goods sent by principal A limited to only one job worker? Two copies of delivery chalan. Okay. So, copies of delivery chalan in triplicate, in triplicate the chalan in terms of rule 45 and 55 for sending the goods to the job worker. Okay. And then, actually it is two copies pa. Two copies. The principal shall prepare in duplicate, not triplicate, in duplicate. In duplicate the chalan, then next where goods are sent from one job worker to another job worker, again so one job worker tailor Lala to another job worker Tinku, so they need to raise another chalan, one chalan to another person, so again two copies of the chalan may be sent by job worker tailor Lala along with the goods. The next case where the goods are returned by the principal by the job worker. So, what will be the treatment related to that? So, in that case, so the person who is returning under his delivery chalan he need to send or whatever delivery chalan that is given to him, he can endorse a copy of that chalan. Then next where goods are sent directly by the supplier to the job worker. So, then the supplier will raise the invoice, bill to ship to invoice, billing address will be this person, principal and shipping address will be that job worker. Where the goods are imported by principal and sent directly from custom station. So, under two copies of delivery chalan with a bill of entry, copy of bill of entry because the goods are directly going from import to the place of job worker where goods are returned in piecemeal by the job worker under the delivery chalan of the job worker because already only one delivery chalan is only given to him. So, two copies, one is for his accounting, another he can endorse along with the goods when he is returning, but he is returning in piecemeal. So, he need to prepare a new delivery chalan. When intimation is required to be furnished, that is an important amendment. So, what is the time limit for filing that ITC 4? ITC 4 needs to be filed by half yearly basis if their aggregate or not during previous year exceeds 5 crores and that half year is by 25th of the month following every half year. Suppose if their aggregate or not does not exceed 5 crores then that ITC 4 is an annual statement by 25th of the month following every year that is this submission of intimation in ITC 4. This point also we discussed. Then number 5 determine the value of job worker. Charges for job work 10,000 and value of goods or service used in performing the job work 2,000. Amortized cost of the molds and dies, jigs, fixtures, etc. supplied by the job worker. So, sorry, by the principal 8,000. Now, what will be taken as a value of supply? Simple. So, first 10,000 we will take and 2,000 charges incurred and recipient any amount that the supplier is liable to pay but which is paid by the recipient should be included. So, total 20,000 will be taken as a value. Then last question, the principal is located in state A, the job worker in state B and the recipient in state C. In case the supply is made from job workers place of business or premises, who will issue invoice? So, principal only will issue invoice. Further also comment if the recipient is in state A. So, First case, principal will raise invoice from state A to state C, ending point, okay. And if recipient is in state A, then place of supply will be state A. If goods are exported from job workers place, then who is required to furnish bond or LUT? Principal only. So, you can see that. So, the invoice will be issued by the supplier located in state A to the recipient located in state C and it will be interstate inter supply. In case the recipient is also located in state A, it will be intrastate supply because principal is only raising invoice. And in case of export directly from job workers place, the LUT or bond should be executed by principal because whomsoever is the owner of the goods, that person only will raise invoice or execute the bond. Then last, 
if inputs or capital goods are not received back within one or three years, what will be the consequences? So then it will be treated as supply by the principal to the job worker and GST will be payable on expiry of that time limit. So that is what we need to write. If inputs or capital goods neither return within the time limit, the principal would issue invoice and declare such supplies in his return after expiry of one year or three years. The date of supply shall be taken as the time of supply. So therefore, interest will also be payable in this case. Again, when job worker is returning the goods thereafter, it will be treated as new supply of goods by the job worker. So this question is a consolidated question containing all the provisions related to job work. Then next question in page number 222, exemptions. XYZ Limited, New Delhi manufactures biscuits under the trade name Tasty Picks. Biscuits are supplied to wholesalers and distributors located across India on free on road basis. Means we need to incur the transportation cost and we need to deliver the goods to their location from the warehouse of the company located at New Delhi. The company uses multiple modes of transportation for supplying the biscuits to its customers spread across the country. The transportation cost is shown as a line item in the invoice and is billed to the customers with a markup of 2% on the total amount of the freight paid inclusive of taxes. Then this freight we need to add 2%. How much we are paying as freight that is recovered fully, fully with 2% markup. So means that should be added to the value. 15 to C, any expenditure that the supplier is liable to pay and which is recovered from the recipient before delivery of goods. Floor used for production process is procured from vendors located in Madhya Pradesh on X factory basis. The company engages goods transport agency to transport the floor from the factories of the vendors to its factory located in New Delhi. The company has provided the following data relating to transportation of biscuits and floor in the month of April. They gave the big list. Now, what is the requirement? Based on the particulars given above, compute the GST payable on the amount paid for transportation by XYZ Limited when it avails the services of different transporters. So, the answer to this first question is, how much is the GST on transportation, how much is the GST on transportation, whether they pay it under FCM or RCM, so how much is the GST on transportation services that is received, that is the question here, first. For sales within NCR region, the company arranged a local minivan belonging to an individual and paid him 54,000, so that 54,000 rupees local minivan will be taxable or exempted. Now you need to know transportation of good service, what are the exemptions? First, transportation of goods by roadways other than GTA or courier agency is exempted. The balancing figure for transportation of goods by roadways is exempted. So, you need to recollect the provision transportation chart. So, by railways, roadways, waterways, airways, minivan means definitely roadways. In case of roadways, only two are taxable, GTA or courier agency. Any other case, it will be exempted. So, do not look at me, please check the book, please check the book. Transportation services, transportation services, so transportation of goods by road other than GTA or courier agency is exempted. That is what many times I told in case of transportation of passengers by road balancing figure is taxable. In case of transportation of goods by road balancing figure is always exempted. So therefore, this will be exempted. So there is no GST with respect to this. Then, number two, second one, for sales to locations 
in distinct states the company booked the goods by indian railways and paid a rail freight of 3 lakh 17000 so railways transportation of goods by railways only specified goods exempted other goods will be taxable so this is biscuits what they are selling is biscuits biscuits is not specified goods the specified goods are agricultural produce food grains including flours pulses milk and salt organic manure newspapers and magazines relief material for natural or man made disasters defense and military equipments biscuits is not there in that therefore this 3 lakh 17000 will be taxable and the rate of gst applicable in this case is you can see below assume the rate of gst on transportation of goods is 5% and biscuits is 12% so transportation service is 5% so 3 lakh 17000 into 5% into 5% 15850 and transportation of goods by railways will come under fcm not under rcm then number 3 third one for sales to location in neighboring states the company booked the goods transport agency and paid road freight of 3 lakh 73000 so here rcm will be applicable so if gta is not opting to pay gst under fcm so therefore we are assuming that gta is not paying gst under fcm because they have not given any information so we do the answer as per rcm otherwise 5% means there can be fcm also because of the amendment so because of the amendment 5% can be fcm or rcm gta has option to pay at 5% fcm also so we need to clearly write that assumption whether it is rcm or fcm but in the absence of information you take rcm only when it is given that they are opting for fcm you take it as fcm so therefore rcm how much is the gta and again for gta also notified goods is exempted but this sales means what biscuits they are selling that is not notified so gta this will come under rcm and it is 3 lakh 73000 so 3 lakh 73000 into 5% 18650 then four next one for purchase this is purchase for purchase of floor from madhya pradesh the company booked the gta and paid road freight 55000 exempted floors pulses milk and salt so this gta for floors will be exempted how much is the amount 55000 so this will be exempted and this is for outward transportation correct outward transportation carriage outwards and this is for inward transportation inward transportation for purchases then point number 5 for purchase of butter butter is not notified goods milk is notified salt is notified but butter is not notified so that will be taxable under rcm freight of 35000 so gta rcm so how much is the freight paid 35000 at 5% 1750 again this is also inward transportation then next for local purchase of baking powder the company booked the gta in a single carriage and paid a road freight of 1500 baking powder will not come under floors baking powder will not come under floors so therefore it will be taxable and previously we had 1500 exemption but that is not there now so which means it will be taxable again gta rcm 1500 into 5% so 750 sorry 7 75 rupees this is also inward transportation then 
anything else for transferring the biscuits to one of its sister concern the company booked a gta and paid road freight of 40000 so that is also taxable gta rcm 40000 into 5 percent 2000 invert transport now we need to total this gst on freight that is the first question they have asked 15,850 plus 18,650 plus 1,750 plus 75 plus 2,000, 38,325. So, 38,325. Why 250? Mm, this, this is amended. So, in this case, actually 75 will come. There is an amendment here and in your book it is correct, super. And 38,325 should be taken. So, because there is an amendment in this case and this will become taxable, this will become taxable, okay. Because this exemption is not available now. Next. Second part of the question you see. What is the second part in this question? Compute the GST charge on transportation cost billed by the company to its customers. Now, only GST on transportation cost. So, with respect to outward transportation, last one is not for inward transportation, last one is outward transportation. Why outward transportation? to sister concern. Now, wherever outward transportation is there, first case you take 54,000. So, how much we are charging? 54,000 plus, sorry, ah, 54,000 plus 2 percent, 54 plus, 54,000 plus 2 percent. Then, on that, the GST will be the rate applicable to biscuits, sir, transportation is exempted, but the moment the transportation we are incurring and recovering, now the character of this expenditure is sale of biscuits, because it is included in the value of biscuits sold. I told many times, when our expenditure is exempted, it does not mean when we recover that expenses, that expense is also exempted. That expenditure when we recover, the character of that expenditure is derived from the main supply. So, the main supply is sale of biscuits. So, therefore, this even though exempted, but when we recover it from the recipient, it will be taxable at the rate applicable to biscuits that is 12 percent. So, first add 2 percent on the 12 percent, 54,000 plus 2 percent, 55,080 on the 12 percent. So, therefore, GST on transport cost, GST on transport cost is 6609.6 or 610. Then, second, second outward transportation. Second outward transportation is 3,17,000 and on that plus 15,850. Say this, say this. 3,17,000 freight cost. To that we need to add GST 15,850. 15,850. On that we need to add 2%. Because see the wording in the question. What is the wording in the question? 2% on the total amount of freight paid inclusive of taxes. On that we need to multiply 12%. Now, first 3,17,000 plus 15,850 plus 2%, 3,39,507 on the 12%, that is GST will be 40,741. Then third outward supply, third outward supply is 3,73,000 freight and along with the GST we will recover plus 2%. So, 3,73,000 plus 
and on this top of this we will add a markup 2% and on this overall 12% GST. So, 3,73,000 plus 18,650 plus 2%, we get 3,99,483. On that 12% will be 47,938. Now, fourth output supply is there. What is that? Sale to sister concerns. Now, read the first paragraph. Only to their customers they are charging with a markup of 2%. Then for their sister concerns they are not charging. Okay. Even question also computation of transportation cost bill by company to its customers. So therefore this total only we need to take as answer for second part. 6610 plus 40,741 plus 47,938 will be 95,289. So, therefore, 95,289 will be taken. And it has been assumed that there is no markup on transportation cost bill to sister concern because they are non-customer. Then, next one, page number 234. So, it is a very good question. My favorite question this is, but not at asked in main exam, MTP, RTP is only they gave, main exam they have not at us, but it is a very good question because covering all the transportations and valuation. So, valuation is also connected here and exemptions with respect to transportation is also covered. Then question number 24, A limited registered under GST collecting following sums exclusive of taxes for the month ending April 2021 towards transportation of passengers. Determine the taxable value on GST taking maximum benefits available under the law. Transportation of passengers on vessel from Chennai to Port Blair. Port Blair is in not in Sri Lanka, Andaman and it is India. Transportation of passengers between places in India, predominantly for tourism is only taxable, but it is not for tourism, therefore it is exempted. Transportation of passengers by vessel from Chennai to Dubai, okay, international and we do not have any exemption with respect to this. So, it will be taxable. Service of 4 lakhs was provided after crossing maritime zones of India whatever it may be fully it will be taxable and 50 lakhs what is the rate of GST so stage carriage contract carriage radio taxi 5 percent other case 18 percent so on 50 we need to take 18 percent 9 lakhs will be taken as the GST now place of supply if you see here so in case of transportation of passengers so section 12 B to B location of recipient B to C starting point of the passenger. So, starting point of the passenger, yes, starting point of the passenger only, not ending point of the passenger, starting point of the passenger only, it is in Chennai. So, Chennai will be taken as the place of supply, that is this. Then, number 3, transportation of passengers by vessel from Dubai to Chennai, service of 6 lakhs were provided after crossing maritime zones of India 40 first actually exemption wise we do not have any exemption place of supply if you see starting point of the passenger Dubai but both supplier and recipient are located in India but the starting point of the passenger is Dubai still it will be taxable it will not come under zero rated and all so 40 lakhs into 18 percent 7.2 then Next one, transportation of passengers through cruise ships within territorial waters of India. Territorial waters is not inland waters. Territorial waters is sea, sea only between places in India. Cruise ships, cruise ships are basically for what purpose? Predominantly for tourism. Cruise ships predominantly for tourism purpose. Due to that reason, it will be taxable. It is not for public transportation and therefore 18 percent. 
predominantly for tourism so taxable then transportation through national waterways exempted inland waters metro transportation of passenger exempted transportation of passengers by stage carriage in 40% it was ac stage carriage so 40% is taxable 60% is exempted so therefore in this only 4 lakhs is taxable so 4 lakhs taxable that was 5% because the rate given is 5% so, 4 lakhs into 5 percent, 0.2. Then, transportation of passengers by non-AC contract carriage for non-tourist purpose, exempted. Transportation of passengers by AC contract carriage, always taxable. So, 2 lakhs, 5 percent. 2 lakhs, 5 percent, 0.1. Then, transportation of passengers by non-AC contract carriage for tourist purpose, taxable. Includes 50,000 towards charges for extra baggage. Everything will be taxable. So, entire 5 lakhs will be taxable. And in case of contract carriage, it is 5 percent. Nah? So, 5 percent. So, how much it comes to 5 lakhs into 5 percent? 2.25. Because contract carriage, the rate given is 5 percent. Transportation of passengers in ropeway taxable. Ropeway, we do not have any exemption and that will be 18 percent. Then, transportation of passengers in radio taxi. Radio taxi will be taxable and it is given as 5 percent. So, 3 into 5 percent, 0.15. Then, next one. Transportation of passengers through meter cabs and e-rickshaws, exempted. E-rickshaw does not mean through e-commerce operator. E-rickshaw means rather than petrol or diesel, it is operated, electric operated, okay. So, not through e-commerce operator. What if it is through e-commerce operator? It will be taxable. So, therefore, it is exempted here. And the total, I think, slight change will be there. So, 11.61 minus 0.9 plus 0.25, 10.96 and with effect from 1 1 2022 exemption not available if the passengers are transported by meter caps, auto rickshaws or stage carriage through an e-commerce operator. If it is done, the liability to pay GST is on e-commerce operator. Then next one. Page number 260. Ramakrishna Trivedi, a registered supplier of Bengaluru, has received the following amounts from the various activities undertaken by him during the month ended 31st October 2020. Services related to funeral, including transportation of dead bodies, not a supply not a supply, excluded from supply. Then, commission received as insurance agent from insurance company. So, insurance agent to insurance company covered under RCM. So, but it is not taxable in the hands of supplier. So, it is taxable in the hands of insurance company. So, insurance company shall pay GST. Then, business assets, old computer given to friends free of cost, the market value of all the computers was 2 lakhs, no input tax credit has been availed on such computers, not a supply, because friends are not related and ITC not availed, so disposal of business asset will not come. Amount received from PQR Limited for performance of classical dance in one program, 1 lakh 99, it exceeds so, 1,50,000 entirely taxable and 1,99,000 should be included in his turnover. Then, service provided to recognize sports body as a coach for participation in a sporting event organized by a recognized sports body. Player, referee, umpire, coach, team manager, exempted. So, 75,000. So, only 1,99,000 will be the taxable value. But we need to clearly write why it is taxable, not a supply, exempted, all those details.
So, this question you know usually for 5 marks type, mixture of all services they will give. Then next one, this is there we discussed in composition scheme, revised book. Same darling, same. Then question number 27, SNP Private Limited Coimbatore exclusively manufactures and sells product Z, page number 299, exclusively manufactures and sells product Z which is exempt from GST, wide notification issued under relevant GST legislations. The company sells product Z only within Tamil Nadu and is not registered under GST. Further, all the invert supply of the company are taxable under forward charge. The turnover of the company in the previous year was 55 lakhs. The company expects the sales to grow by 20 percent in the current year. Owing to the growing demand of the product, the company decided to increase its production capacity and purchased additional machinery for manufacturing on 1st July. The purchase price of the capital goods was 20 lakhs excluding GST at 18 percent. Actually, they are making only exempted supplies. So, they are not registered. They are exempted from registration. And, but the detail is not given. Whether they are registered or not, the details is not given. What we have is that they are making only exempted supplies. But are they registered or not, we do not have any information. And now, however effective from 1st November, so it is given, na, the company sells only product Z within Tamil Nadu and it is not registered, it is given. So, when it is given means they are exempted from registration and they have not registered. Now, effective from 1st November exemption available on Z was withdrawn by the central government and the turnover of the company for the half year was 50 lakhs. Now, the board of directors of SNP Limited wants to know whether they have to register under GST. Whenever their aggregate turnover exceeds the threshold limit, the applicable threshold limit for Coimbatore Tamil Nadu engaged in exclusive supply of goods is 40 lakhs and their turnover already by September was 50 lakhs. Now, from 1st November, the exemption is withdrawn. So, they are making partly taxable, partly exempted. So, they are liable to get registered within 30 days. From 1st November, they need to make application for registration. 1st November, they are liable to get registered and they need to make application for registration within 30 days from 1st November. And second, in case of the above question, SNP Private Limited is already registered in respect of certain taxable supplies being made by it along with manufacture of exempted product Z, other facts remaining the same. Can it take ITC on the additional missionary purchase? Yes. If they are already registered, if they are already registered, then they can take the benefit under 18.1 D on the capital goods after reducing 5 percent for every quarter or part thereof from the date of purchase till the date of conversion. What is the date of purchase of this capital goods? 1st July. What is the date of conversion? 1st November. So, how many quarters? July, August, September, one quarter, October, November, December, two quarters. So, therefore, 20 lakhs into 18 percent, 3 lakhs 60,000, 3 lakhs 60,000 minus, so 5 percent for every quarter, so 10 percent, 3 lakhs 60,000 minus 10 percent, that is 3 lakh 24,000, they can avail it as ITC in terms of 18.1 D. And if they are not registered, then they will not be able to take credit on capital goods because the applicable section in that case will be 18.1 A. Then next one, this is there in our uh, revise, same question, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Tripura, Mahadev Enterprises, registration chapter. Then look into this, page number 314, page number 314, determine the amount to be paid to electronic cash ledger 
for measures a limited assuming it is not covered by exception to rule 86 b export turnover of goods or services under bond or letter of undertaking during april so they, they, we, they are asking amount to be paid through electronic cash ledger assuming it is not covered by exception to 86 b now while taking that turnover for applicability of 86 b we will take only taxable turnover so here 25 lakhs we will not take export we will not take then supply of goods or service to scz we will not take zero rated we will not take exempted no supplies which are not leviable no taxable turnover 1 crore which exceeds 50 lakhs and on that taxable turnover we have to compute what is the gst that is 18 lakhs even though we have itc of 20 lakhs but we have to pay 1% through cash ledger which means 18 lakhs into 1% 18000 we will pay through cash ledger and remaining so 17 lakhs 82000 we will pay through credit ledger is it clear so first we need to determine the turnover and while determining turnover what and all should be taken as it exceeds 50 lakhs in a month 86 b will be applicable and then we need to compute the amount that is payable and what is still the balance in credit ledger the balance in credit ledger is 2 lakh 18 thousand then next page number 321 Padmavati traders registered in Karnataka is engaged in supply of taxable goods. Its turnover in the preceding financial year was 230 lakhs and was furnishing its GST return on monthly basis. In the beginning of April month in the current financial year, it sought advice from its tax consultant, Dua consultants, whether it can furnish its GST returns on quarterly basis from now onwards. Dua consultants advised Padmavati traders that it cannot furnish its return on a quarterly basis as the GST law does not provide for a quarterly return under any circumstances. Discuss the technical veracity of the advice given by Dua consultants. First, what should be the aggregate turnover during the preceding financial year for applicability of QRMP? It should not exceed 5 crores. In the present case, their aggregate turnover during the previous year does not exceed 5 crores it is only 230 lakhs therefore during the current financial year they can opt for filing returns on a quarterly basis and whenever they file returns on a quarterly basis so gstr1 has to be filed by 13th of the month following every quarter gstr 3b has to be filed by 22nd or 24th of the month following every quarter however uh, they have optional IFF facility for the purpose of reporting the details of B2B invoices, but those invoices should not exceed 50 lakhs in a month. Okay, those B2B invoices should not exceed 50 lakhs in a month. So, that data we need to write here. Okay, so that is about QRMP. Then, page number 332. Page number 332. So, Usually like this only the questions will be on registration, procedures, appeals, etc. Small, small questions, 4 marks questions only all these are. Compute the quantum of pre-deposit required to be made under section 107 of CGST Act in each of the following independent cases. In an order dated 1810 issued to measures RR Limited, the joint commissioner of central tax has confirmed a tax demand of 45 lakhs. Measures RR limited has admitted 5 lakhs and tax liability as tax liability and intends to file an appeal against tax demand of 40 lakhs. Now, the pre-deposit will be in case of first appeal, 100% of the admitted due plus 10% of the disputed tax. So, 100% of the admitted due is 5 lakhs and 10% of the disputed tax is 4 lakhs. So, therefore, 9 lakhs will be payable and this 10% will be subject to maximum 25 crores under CGST 
25 crores under HGST, but that is not applicable here. So, just 9 lakhs will be taken as the pre-deposit. Now, second point. In an order dated 18-10-2020, issued to measures KK Limited, the Joint Commission of Central Tax has confirmed a tax demand of 45 lakhs and imposed a penalty of 5 lakhs. Measures KK Limited intends to file an appeal with Commissioner Appeals against the said order. There is nothing admitted. There is nothing admitted means everything will be disputed. So, then in that case only on disputed tax, not on penalty, only on disputed tax. What is the disputed tax? 45 lakhs. On 45 lakhs, 10 percent will be 4 lakh 50 thousand. That will be taken as the pre-deposit in this case. Then page number 318. Page number 318. So, this is a question given in May 22 exam. Agni Limited filed GST return under section 39 means 3B for the month of January on 11th April. So, there is a delay, delay in filing 3B. Original due date for the said return was 20th February. Details of tax assessed as payable for the said month are given below. CGST, SGST, output tax payable 180, tax payable under reverse charge 40, input tax credit available for utilization is 70,000. Compute the net tax payable in cash while filing the said return as well as the interest payable for the delayed remittance of tax. Now, the net GST payable will be 180 minus 70 plus 40. Because GST payable under FCM minus input tax credit plus RCM liability. Now, you may get a doubt. Sir, whatever we paid under RCM, we can take as ITC. Then 70 plus 40, 1 lakh 10,000. And 1 lakh 10,000 minus 1 lakh 80. That is 1 lakh 80 minus 1 lakh 10 only now we should do. They use the word input tax credit available for utilization. Utilization means what? While computing 70, they already took 40. Not only 40, everything they took, they reversed exempted. So, balance credit available for utilization means the final step we do now, ITZ availed minus ITZ reverse. In that ITZ availed, even GST and or RCM is there. And minus reversal, so remaining utilized means that is the final number. Means in that 70,000, 40,000 is already there. So, do not add it again. You got it. So, therefore, 1 lakh 80 minus 70 plus 40. So, 1 lakh 50,000 will be taken as the liability, net liability. And on that net liability, interest will be computed from 21st February till 11th April. So, February 8 days and March 31 days, April 11 days, that is 50 days. For 50 days, we need to compute the interest 3,699. 3,699 on this 1,50,000. Now, assuming the company has a ITC balance of 2,50,000 each under CGST, SGST for the set month, compute the interest payable if entire tax due of the set month was paid through electronic credit ledger to the extent possible. Now, they have 2,50,000 and even 70,000. So, fully their FCM liability they can pay using credit ledger. But RCM liability they have to pay. So, but RCM liability has to be paid by cash only. So, means interest is computed only on 40,000. Because the net liability means that much amount we pay through cash ledger that is 40,000. So, on 40,000 we need to compute the interest same. So, for 50 days 986 rupees, 986 rupees. So, that is with respect to this. Then as turnover for the month is not given. So, we are not applying 86B, but if 86B is also applicable, for example, in this question, if 86B is also applicable, then always that 1% of the gross liability under FCM, we have to pay using cash ledger, okay. So, 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 first case, leave it, first case, same, first case, same, no change, because already we are paying through cash ledger, correct, and that is more than 1%. That is more than 1%. But second case, how much will be the amount payable through cash ledger? 1,80,000 into 1%, 1,800 plus RCM liability 40,000. So, 41,000. 
800 on that interest will be computed. Understood here? For delay in filing 3B, interest will be computed on that amount which is paid through the cash ledger. That is only in case of section 129 penalty. Only in case of section 129 penalty, we need to pay 25 percent of the penalty if you go for appeal against the penalty order. That is not appeal against penalty order, that is appeal against the tax order. In case of appeal against the tax order, we need to pay 10 percent of the admitted, uh, sorry, 10 percent of the disputed tax. Okay. But if you are going for penalty order under 129, then in that case, 25 percent of the penalty we need to pay as pre deposit. Then page number 331, this question, the original adjudicating authority confirmed a demand of GST of 42,50,000 with interest and imposed a penalty of 4,25,000 in its order dated 1st September 2020. The SSC filed an appeal before appellate authority challenging the demand as well as penalty. The CAG audited the records of the SC and then opined that actual amount of demand should have been 48,50,000. So, they enhanced. While the issue was pending before the appellate authority based on the note, the commissioner stayed the order of the original authority and issued a show cause notice on 15th March proposing revision of the order of the original authority and revise the demand on the base of audit note. Examine the correctness of the action taken by the commissioner in accordance with the provisions of GST law. Revision, revision. Is revision authority can revise the order. Even if it is in appeal, they can revise one year from the outcome of the appeal or three years from the adjudication order, whichever is later. So, revision order can be based on audit note. Yes, revision can be based on suo moto or based on information or based on request from the commissioner. And Revision order should be within this time limit, but matters pending in the appeal cannot be revised. But check whether entire order is under appeal or only part of the order is under appeal. Demand order 42,50,000, the SC filed an appeal before the appellate authority challenging the demand as well as penalty, means the entire order is in appeal. When entire order is in appeal, then revision authority cannot initiate revision. If part of the order is under appeal, then remaining part of that order, revision authority can initiate revision. So, in this case, so matter is pending in appeal, same cannot be revised, hence the action taken by the commissioner is incorrect. It is a very good question. So, given in ICA study material, not yet tested in exam. So, mark it as very important. Then, Page number 348. Nirmal Private Limited registered in Vasi Maharashtra is engaged in supply of taxable goods and services. In the month of April, it sold goods worth rupees 5 lakhs excluding GST to Suraksha Enterprises and collected tax at 28 percent on the said goods from the buyer. However, the actual rate of tax applicable in the given case was 18 percent. Nirmal Private Limited deposited the tax at 18 percent on these goods to the government on the due date and retained the remaining tax collected. Amount collected as tax but not paid. Determine the amount of penalty, if any, that may be imposed on Nirmal Private Limited in the month of October. As per section 122, subsection 1, if any amount is collected as tax and not paid within 3 months, then 
penalty shall be 10,000 rupees or 100% of the tax whichever is higher. What is the amount collected as tax but not paid? 10%, correct? So, 5 lakhs into 10%, 50,000. So, 10,000 or 50,000 whichever is higher, 50,000 will be taken as the penalty in this case. And next one, Bindu sir, and in this question, sir, why are we comparing with 10,000? You can compare it with uh, separately also here yeah, because 5 lakhs, if you take 5 lakhs as total, total GST, you split it into 2, CGST will be 25,000, 25,000 or 10,000, whichever is higher, 25,000. So, 25,000 under CGST, 25,000 under SGST, so the total penalty will be 50,000 because the provision 10% of the, sorry, 10,000 rupees or 100% of the tax, whichever is higher, is applicable under CGST. Now, this entire tax is, you know, IGST like that we are taking because this is the total tax given. So, now we need to split it into 2, 5 lakhs into 10% you are taking, correct? So, instead you take 5 lakhs into 10%, 50,000, divide it into 2. 25,000 CGST, 25,000 SGST. So, then penalty will be 25,000 or 10,000 whichever is higher, 25,000, 25,000 or 10,000 whichever is higher, 25,000. So, finally, you can write the penalty will be 50,000. The problem will happen because what if instead of 5 lakhs, it is 1 lakh. 1 lakh into 10%, 10,000. We will compare 10,000 or 10,000. So, 10,000 will be but actually 20,000 will become the penalty. How come? 10,000 or 5,000, whichever is higher, 10,000. So, another 10,000 under SGST, so 10, 20,000 will become penalty, that's why. Bindu sir, Chief Executive Officer of Ashoka Solutions Limited is issued a summon, summon to appear before the Central Tax Officer to produce the books of accounts of Ashoka Solutions Limited in an inquiry conducted on the said company. Determine the amount of penalty, if any, that may be imposed on Bindu sir if he fails to appear before the central tax officer. Penalty under section 122, subsection 3. 3. Summons is issued, but he did not appear. So, 122, subsection 3 is on person who is not the main accused, but a party to the offence, or to whom the summons is issued, but he did not appear. In that case, the penalty will be 122 subsection 3 and the penalty will be up to 25,000 rupees that will be taken up to 25,000 under each act. That is the reason why while giving the question, you know, they have not given anything. So, you can write under CGST Act 25,000, the same penalty is payable under SGST Act also. Next, this question we did. Anand Kumar Gupta self assessed his tax liability. Page number 359. Check. 359. Then page number 345 you take. Page number 345. Examine whether the offences committed in each of the following independent cases are bailable. Further determine the quantum of punishment on prosecution means imprisonment under CGST Act in each of these cases. Homi Gaba collects 240 lakhs as tax, as tax, amount collected as tax and deposits 150 lakhs with government. And therefore, what is the amount involved in the offence? 90 lakhs. Generally, imprisonment is applicable when amount is collected as tax but not paid, but only when it exceeds 1 crore. 1 crore, 1 year. 2 crores, 3 years. And 5 crores, 5 years. So, 1, 2, 5, 1, 3, 5. So, more than 1 crore only, punishment will be there. As the amount involved in the offence does not exceed 1 crore, so therefore imprisonment is not applicable in this case. However, the penalty shall be levied under 122 subsection 1, which is 
10,000 rupees or 100% of the tax, whichever is higher. Okay. So, that is the answer for this. Next, second, Dathukeshwar that collects 630 lakhs as tax from its clients but deposits only 120 lakhs with the central government. Again, it is amount collected as tax. 630 minus 120. 500 and 000. Okay. So, therefore, amount collected as tax but not paid. How much is that amount? 5, 10. 5, 10 lakhs means it exceeds 5 crores. So, when it exceeds 5 crores, so then in that case, so what will be the penalty? That is imprisonment. Penalty will be there always. But imprisonment will be up to 5 years plus fine. 5 years plus fine. And as the amount exceeds 5 crores, it is a cognizable and non-bailable offence and as the amount exceeds 2 crores, there will be imprisonment also in the, sorry, arrest also in this case. More than 2 crores arrest, more than 5 crores cognizable and non-bailable and imprisonment will be up to 5 years plus fine. Now, this is in case of collected amount as tax but not paid. Now, Homi Gaba has made another offence it is found that he has falsified financial records and has not maintained proper records, means books of accounts default. In case of books of accounts default, irrespective of the amount involved, the imprisonment will be up to 6 months plus or fine or both. In case of 3 offences, books of accounts default, obstructing an officer from doing duty and tampering material evidence. Now, finally, they gave one more question. What will be the implications in the above case if Homi Gaba and Datukeshwar Dutt repeat the offences? In both the cases, in both the cases for repeated offences, it is up to 5 years plus fine. Whenever you are writing imprisonment up to 5 years, etc., there you write minimum imprisonment of 6 months. That is the answer for this. Then, this question actually asked in uh, May 18 for 5 marks, that is first attempt itself, they asked a question on offences and penalties. Then next, this question, page number 369, this is a very good question on refunds. The following particulars are furnished by Delight Exporters Karnataka, which is duly registered under the GST law. The entity also has also filed bond or LUT in order to export goods without payment of any taxes. You are required to calculate the refund amount in respect of input tax credit on inputs and input services relating to goods exported in the relevant tax period. First, turnover excluding supply of services but includes exempt supply of 8 lakhs and invert supply of 2 lakhs. So, that is invert supply is 2 lakhs and turnover excluding supply of services but includes exempted supplies of 8 lakhs. So, therefore, in this 76 lakhs, this 76 lakhs is what? No, not, not total, only goods, only goods and so see this, we need to take first turnover, in that turnover we have goods and services, in that goods they have given exempted, exempted goods. What is that exempted goods? 8 lakhs. Exempted goods, 8 lakhs. Then, what is non exempted? Non exempted will be 76 minus 8, 68 lakhs. Then, next. Z 
invert supply we will include in turnover huh? turnover includes exempted supplies of 8 lakhs and invert supplies of 2 lakhs ok. So, next means in this turnover you take the assumption that 2 lakhs is included we take we will take that assumption we will take, but actually we should not take but we will take no issue. So, then what will be the non exempted 66 lakhs ok. So, therefore, we are taking the assumption here that invert supplies of 2 lakhs is also included in this 76 lakhs ok and invert supply should never come in the turnover, but they add it ok. One stupid fellow he is he added that, so we will exclude it ok fine. <laughs> then services and services we do not have the information. 0 rated supply of goods under bond or LUT, 0 rated supply of goods. So, again in this goods 66 lakhs, we have two things 0 rated, non 0 rated, non 0 rated. So, 0 rated is how much? 12 lakhs, 0 rated turnover of goods 12 lakhs. Then what will be the non-zero rated turnover of goods? 66 minus 12, 54 lakhs. Now this is about goods. Then we have export of services under bond or LUT and non-zero rated supply of services. Now export of services, so services is again divided into two, zero rated, non-zero rated non-zero rated, non-zero rated supply of services is 10 lakhs. So, that we are taking when uh, whereas zero rated do not take directly because the meaning of zero rated supply of services is amount collected during the month add advances received in the previous month for which supplies are made in this month minus advances received in this month for which payments like supply is made in future. Now, what is the payments received? Payments received towards zero rated supply which includes 12 lakhs against which service are yet to be supplied. So, 48 lakhs minus 12 lakhs then and advance received in the past for which supplies are made in the current tax period. So, 14 lakhs plus 14 lakhs. So, you will get one number that is 50 lakhs. 50 lakhs is taken here. Next, turnover on which suppliers have claimed refund under rule 894A4B. So, that is whenever we take 0 rated turnover, we should take out the turnover on which refund is already claimed. What is the 0 rated turnover? 12 lakhs. From the 12 lakhs, we should reduce only 6 lakhs. Why sir? Sir, we do not have services under deemed exports. We have only goods under deemed exports. They have given sir, they will give sir, no other work they have, their job itself is to confuse you, their motive itself is to make you fail, do not worry about that, you stick on to the subject, ok. Their objective is always this only sir, bad boy sir they are, they will always make you fail sir, but beyond that you should succeed in your life, you understood or not. So, people around you will always pull you, they will say, you are like this, you are like that, you are waste, all these things. Finally, you should not listen to all those shit. You should focus like that. This services they gave, sir, they will give, sir. You do not take. So, 6 lakhs. So, minus 6 lakhs. So, which means 0 rated will be 6 lakhs. And therefore, 
only 6 lakhs adjustment we need to make. Services do not do anything. Now, ITC on inputs and input services, ITC relating to 894A4B. Now, can you tell me what is zero rated turnover? Six lakhs plus this is for goods, for services, fifty lakhs. That will be fifty six lakhs. Then adjusted total turnover. Adjusted total turnover. What is adjusted total turnover? Exempted will come in adjusted total turnover. Ah? No. Adjusted will not include exempted because ITC is not pertaining to exempted. ITC is pertaining to taxable only. So, it should not come. Then, zero rated, 6 lakhs. Non-zero rated, 54 lakhs. Plus, here, 50 lakhs. plus 10 lakhs okay so how much 1 crore 1 crore 20 lakhs okay check this pa 6 lakhs plus 54 plus 50 plus 10 lakhs you understood so that will be 1 crore 20 lakhs now Listen carefully, listen carefully. Sir, non-zero rated supply of services, non-zero rated supply of services is 10 lakhs, correct? And turnover on which suppliers have claimed 894A4B services, 6 lakhs will be part of non-zero rated. And why we should take out that particular thing because adjusted total turnover meaning is concentrate adjusted total turnover meaning is we need to take zero rated non zero rated minus turnover under 89 4a 4 b as they have given services here under 89 4 a 4 b we need to exclude this so which means minus 6 lakhs so, therefore, we will be getting 1 crore 14 lakhs. So, then why this 6 lakhs you did not exclude here? Pa, this is goods pa. For goods, we need to reduce only rule 89 4A 4B for goods. Then, sir, why you excluded this 6 lakhs in the adjusted total turnover? Because in adjusted total turnover, we need to exclude all the turnovers on which refund is claimed under 89 4A 4B. Okay. Then why we did not exclude it in services? Because the meaning of zero rated services is payment received plus advances received in the past minus advances received in the present for future. There is a specific meaning like this. That is why we need to take that way. So now we got zero rated turnover and adjusted total turnover. Now, finally, net ITC. What is net ITC? Net ITC will be ITC on inputs and input service during the tax period, including those under 894A4B. 12 lakhs minus 2 lakh 40. So, 12 lakhs minus 2 lakh 40. Why we need to exclude 2 lakh 40? So, 894A4B already refund is claimed. So, that should be taken out. Therefore, 9 lakh 60,000. Now, the maximum refund equals to, the maximum refund equals to 9,60,000 into 0 rated turnover, 56 lakhs divided by adjusted total turnover, 1 crore 14 lakhs, 4 lakh, 517. So, this will be taken 4,71,579 will be taken as the refund of ITC on account of zero rated. That refund already we got 2,40,000 that do not add. 
So under zero rated, how much is this? Here only one point, which is a twist is that the denominator we take 120. The denominator we take 120. So numerator you will be clear. We will exclude only goods related 89 4A 4B. And denominator we should exclude. So extra 6 lakhs. Why extra 6 lakhs we need to exclude? Deemed exports services. Then where that 6 lakhs is in? In that 10 lakhs. In this 10 lakhs. Non-zero rated is there now in that. That's why we are excluding. So, 1 crore 14 lakhs is taken. 4 lakh 71, 579. That is the answer for this. Then, next one. Page number 396. Mr. X imports a cream called Moisture BN, which has certain pharmaceutical contents. The cream is prescribed by dermatologist for curing dry skin condition and at the same time is also available without prescription of a medical practitioner. Mr. X classifies the cream as medicament. Since its pharmaceutical contents and is being prescribed by the dermatologist for treating dry skin condition. However, proper officer is of the view that cream should be classified as cosmetic or toilet preparation as the same is mainly used for care of the skin and can also be purchased without any prescription. Proper officer contends that even if a cosmetic product contains certain subsidiary pharmaceutical contents, it should be still treated as cosmetics only. So, there is one case law, since laboratory Supreme Court case, in that customs classification related case. So, in that since laboratory Supreme Court case, they are telling that when a product is containing medical properties, it does not mean that it should be called as medicament, but we should see the trade understanding of the product. Whether this product is prescribed by a doctor and is available in the medical shop only under a doctor's prescription, then it will be called as a medicament. Otherwise, when it can be purchased by any person, so the trade understanding says that it should be cosmetic. So, the Honorable Supreme Court held that moisture BN is essentially for cure as it is prescribed by the doctors and hence it shall be classified as medicament. And why they are telling it as medicament? Because the common parlance is not applied in this case. So, common parlance if you are applying, it will be treated as cosmetic. But without applying the common parlance, so they have classified this as medicament. And their observation for this is that when a product contains pharmaceutical ingredients that have curative properties, the proportion of such ingredients is not invariably the deceive factor. The relevant factor is the curative attributes of such ingredients. So, Supreme Court is telling it is like overriding case, it is a contrary case, generally cosmetic products only it is because of the usage. But what they are telling, they are not applying trade parlance, they are telling even though it is available in the market without prescription, but it has a curative property. Curative property means it is used for what? Curing the disease, curing the skin, skin problem then it should be treated as a medicament only, but it will not be treated as cosmetic. And however, if any product according to this case, if any product which has a curative property, it should be treated like a medicine, medicine only, it should not be treated like a cosmetic. And this has been exception to the trade parlance test. There is something called as trade parlance test, means trade understanding of the product is relevant. But the trade parlance test is irrelevant and this case law says that so because of the curative property it will be treated as medicament that is this. Page number 426. So this page number 426 it is a normal question pa. 
design and development charges, commission payable to local agent. So, freight, air freight. So, what you should do? Actual or 20% of FOB, design and development charges paid in USA. It should be included. Commission paid to local agent. That should also be included. Commission payable to local agent of exporter included. So, it is exporter's agent in India. Exporter's agent in India means selling commission. It should be included. And insurance charges actually paid but not available. So, we will take 1.125%. And that will be taken as the answer. Normal question only. Great Year Limited imported an offset printing machine from Germany for 5 crores and the bill of entry for home consumption was cleared on October 2020 on payment of duty. However, due to certain technical glitches, the said machine could not be started functioning and the said machine was sent back to the supplier for repairs in November 2020. The manufacturer of the machinery in Germany has made necessary repairs and has sent back the machine again to Great Year. Accordingly, Great Year Limited imported the machine without any remanufacturing or reprocessing. Since the machine was having manufacturing defect, the repairs were carried out by the machine manufacturer without charging any amount. Even then, we need to include the fair value of repairs that is 70 lakhs. So, cost of material and 90 lakhs labor. So, 70 plus, see this. So, however, the fair cost of repairs carried out including cost of material consumed during the repairs for 70 lakhs would have been 90 lakhs. So, 90 lakhs will be taken as the fair value of repairs. Then freight and insurance both ways, 7.5 lakhs each. So, 7.5 lakhs into 2. So, total 105 lakhs will be taken and on that basic customs duty, social fare surcharge, IGST, regular computation. Then 46, question number 46, page number 481 you see. You see page number 481 in your book. With reference to the provisions of FTP, discuss giving reasons whether the following statements are true or false. If any doubt arises in respect of interpretation of any provision of FTP, the said doubt should be forwarded to CBIC whose decision thereon would be final and binding. True or false? False pa. It is DGFT. Authorization once claimed by an importer cannot be refused by DGFT. False. Why? Authorization is not a right and DGFT is having power to refuse to grant or renew. IEC is a unique 12 digit permanent account number based alpha numeric code. False. It is a 10 digit number. Waste generated during manufacturing SEZ can be freely disposed of in DTA on payment of applicable custom duty without any authorization. True. True. Because even though import of waste and scrap requires license, but this is sale from SEZ, so that do not require any license. A customs clearance permit is required from DGFT in certain specific case of import of gifts. Yes, if the gift contains restricted article, then import of that gift, we need to get a customs clearance permit. 